And so, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I rest my case. Hmm. Mr. Hutt, do you know you're not wearing any pants? What? Ah! Thank you. The court recalls the arguments that were made after the conclusion of the state's case, both from the state and the defense. Uh, the court finds that a reasonable juror could make a finding of guilt on the elements of the sole charge in the information beyond and to the exclusion of each and every reasonable doubt. For those reasons, the renewed judgment of acquittal is denied. denied. Ms. Boone, I have a couple of questions to go over with you, ma'am. You've been previously sworn this morning. Your attorney has indicated that all of the evidence and testimony of all witnesses in your case have been presented to the jury, with the exception of the two no-contact orders, pre-marked as AB from June 16, 2019, and the no-contact order of June 19, 2019, pre-marked as AC, which once the jury comes back in, he will enter into evidence and produce them to the jury for their viewing. Are there any witnesses that you wanted to call that your attorney failed to call? No. Is there any evidence that you wanted your attorney to present that any of them failed to present? No. Are you satisfied with all of your attorneys up and until this point? Very good. Is there anything that you would like to bring to my attention at this time? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, can we go ahead and bring in our panel? State. Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes. All right. Let's stand and bring in our panel, please. All right. Thank you. You all can be seated. Good morning, members of the jury. Welcome back to 12 Alpha in the Orange County Courthouse. Mr. Owens, any other additional witnesses, evidence, or testimony, sir? No, sir, on behalf of Sarah Boone, the defense rep. Thank you. Defense, or state, are you intending on putting on a rebuttal case? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed, sir. Dr. Tanya Warner. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How do you work? Um, I'm employed at Meridian Behavioral Health Care in Gainesville, Florida. And what services do you render there? Um, I'm their chief medical officer. And I see there is a book in front of you. What book is in front of you? Yes. So this is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, um, and this is the fifth edition text revision, which is the most current edition. Is battered spouse syndrome in there as a diagnosis? No, it is not. Where, if anywhere, does it fit into any of the categories within the DSM-5 TR? It would come under um, one of the trauma categories, um, most most specifically under um, most likely post-traumatic stress disorder. Are there any agreed upon criteria within the relevant forensic psych psychiatric and forensic psychological communities about battered spouse syndrome? There are. And what would those be? Um, so it's, it's again, having experienced a trauma, um, repeatedly uh, violence within an intimate uh, relationship, and then having symptoms secondary to that, um, avoidance, um, so tiptoeing around, um, trying to avoid uh, recreating the violence. There's a difference between experiencing a violent relationship and whether or not that person uh, is going to experience trauma from those behaviors they, they witness and experience. Is that fair? Yes. Is it fair to say that an experience that a person has, whether or not that person believes it's traumatic, is a subjective experience? Yes, each individual is different. And so um, each individual is going to um, take that experience um, differently. Can hypothetically a couple be involved in a violent relationship for a number of years, even three and a half years, and battered spouse syndrome not necessarily apply to either or both of them. Yes, that's correct. Can you explain that? Um, so again, each individual is different. So one individual may develop a, uh, the symptoms of battered spouse syndrome, and and one individual may not under the same exact circumstances, just depending on on their makeup um, and what they've experienced in their um, in their background and their biological makeup. Is there a cycle of violence that is sometimes used uh, to describe battered spouse syndrome? There is. Can you describe that? There is. So um, there's uh, the initial, um, there's kind of a tension buildup se um, section where um, you feel the kind of tension building up um, and and the individual can feel kind of the, the incident coming. And then there's the actual incident of violence. Um, and then following the incident of violence, there's a honeymoon phase, what they call the honeymoon phase. And that's the third phase um, where the individual who uh, created the violence uh, attempts to make up uh, to the victim. 
um, and recreate kind of the relationship and pull them back in. And then it starts all over again where you feel the kind of tension start building up again to the, to the incidents of violence. Does abuse have to come in the form of physical or sexual violence? No. Can you explain your answer? So it can also come in, in ways of, of coercion. It can come in ways of control, um, such as financial. So if an individual controls um, another individual financially um, or uh, controls uh, their um, their ability to uh, drive or go out, um, their ability to be around their other family members or friends kind of isolates them from other individuals, uh, controls their ability to work. Um, so controls their ability to make money um, or access to funds um, so they can control them in any number of ways. Is this kind of about like an inequitable power dynamic in the relationship? Yes, absolutely. Can a man be on the receiving end of verbal, uh, harsh words, physical violence or sexual violence and um, end up having the syndrome of battered spouse syndrome? Yes, it crosses all boundaries, and we see it in all types of relationships, whether it be heterosexual or homosexual relationships. Um, we see it cross all boundaries. Can this element of control come from controlling personal items such as identification papers? Yes, absolutely. Can control uh, potentially, hypothetically, come from uh, partner A gifting partner B an item, but still considering that item partner A's because he or she paid for it, even though it was a gift? Yes. In this particular case where you asked to do an evaluation of Sarah Boone? Yes. Do you see Ms. Boone in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point out where she is and what she's wearing? Um, she's sitting at a table there uh, wearing a dark suit and a pinkish top. Made a record reflection to identify the defendant? Record was so reflect. What date did you have an evaluation of Ms. Boone? Um, it was early in October, I believe October 2nd. And this was at the request of the state of Florida? Yes, it was. And subject to a court order? Yes. And where, um, who was present for this evaluation? Um, the defense and the prosecution. All right. Tell us about the evaluation with um, Ms. Boone. What do you do first? Um, so I met with Ms. Boone at the jail um, in a conference room. Again, the prosecution was there and her attorney. Um, I met with her for approximately two and a half hours, just under two and a half hours. Um, I introduced myself and um, explained that the interview would not be confidential, that um, I would be um, coming to court um, if asked to, to um, share my opinions. Um, and uh, she agreed to participate. Um, I then uh, start out with just general information. So getting to know her, um, date of birth, kind of background information, um, who her parents are, childhood. I go through her educational background, her work background, um, her marital background. Um, I go through health, um, psychiatric background, um, any substance use issues, um, I do a mental status examination. I stop you there. Yeah. Elaborate further on that. So a mental status examination is just um, questions to determine kind of memory and um, cognition, kind of how their thought process is, um, how they're thinking. Um, are they able to kind of fluidly think through uh, processes? Um, right, go on after that. Uh, and then I... Uh, transition from there into um, going walking through uh, the incident that happened with her. All right. What did she indicate uh, occurred on February 23rd, 2020 to you? All right. Is it all right if I refer to my notes just to me? Just if you need them to refresh your memory, please do so, but um, don't read from them. Just let us know. Um, so she had uh, a difficult time recalling what time they actually woke up that day. Um, uh, initially, she said in the morning, and then she said she wasn't even sure that it was in the morning. Um, she said that uh, they both um, wanted to drink, um, but that she uh, asked that they could clean the house first instead, and that they did some vacuuming and cleaning. Um, they had a um, half a bottle of wine left over from the day before that they drank. Um, she felt about four o'clock in the afternoon they drank that. 
out on the back porch. Um, and she described that they had kind of two beach chairs out there and a dart board, um, and that they kind of hung out there, um, a lot on the back porch, spent time out there. Um, they did a puzzle, um, out there, um, and completed that and then did some kind of, um, artwork. Um, she, um, felt like he was um, getting frustrated thinking about his life, that he had lost his job. Um, And so she uh, encouraged him uh, to call his daughters. Um, Although she knew that, um, that they did not like to talk to him when he was drinking. So I'm not sure um, why she had encouraged them, him to call them at that point um, because they were already drinking. Um, and she also at some point encouraged him to call his brother, um, because she wanted him to explain to his brother that, um, he had pulled her down the stairs the night before. Um, although that didn't happen, um, he didn't explain that to the brother and, um, according to her and, um, then, um, at some point they went and got another bottle of wine um, and some cigarettes from the grocery store and continued to drink. Um, and then, uh, they were inside the house and, um, then he, I guess, tagged her at some point and said, tag, you're it, which indicated that they were going to play hide and seek. And she said she went upstairs, um, and hid in the shower and waited for him to come. And he never came upstairs. And so she eventually came out of the shower to look for him. And as she was coming down the stairs, she said she saw him slipping into a suitcase, which was on the living room floor that they had um, put out because they were going to donate it. So she went downstairs and indicated that she had found him and they were kind of laughing and she zipped the suitcase up. Um, and they continued to laugh, she said, at that point. Um, and they were having a good time and laughing and enjoying themselves and, and, and having a good time. And she said, and then she became angry. So, and she said she remembered um, what it felt like when he was choking her. And um, she became angry. What did she do after she became angry? Um, I'm going to refer to my notes at this point. Pressure to memory, just uh, yes. go down and then you can tell us what you remember. She said um, that she shook the suitcase and that she lost control of it and it flipped. Then what happened? Then she said that he um, stuck two fingers out and her son's baseball bat was sitting there and she picked the bat up and hit his hand. Then what happened? And then she went upstairs and um, waited um, for him to come upstairs. Alcohol. Can you tell us uh, what you know about the effects as a medical doctor of ethanol or alcohol uh, on a human body? Yes. So it causes um, intoxication, as we all know, um, and it causes disinhibition. disinhibition. It works on the frontal lobe of the brain um, and allows us to do things that we wouldn't normally do. It disinhibits us. And in the course of your practice, uh, have you ever come across a diagnosis of alcohol abuse disorder? Yes. And what is that? Well, alcohol abuse um, is an old disorder. So we used to use alcohol dependence and alcohol abuse. It's now been combined in the DSM-5. Um, in the DSM-5 TR, it's alcohol use disorder. And considering what a patient or a client or somebody that you've been asked to evaluate by a government entity, um, do you take into account that person who's relaying the history to use a consumption of alcohol at the time of the history that they're dealing with. Yes. Why is that? Um, because again, it, it affects their behavior um, and their actions. Um, does alcohol have any effect on a person's memory? It can. What, if any, um, relationship is there between acute alcohol use or acute alcohol intoxication and battered spouse syndrome? Um, it, it, again, it can affect your memory. It can affect your reactions. It can affect your response to different things. Does the disinhibitory nature of alcohol, um, strengthen, weaken, or have no effect on battered spouse syndrome? It would depend on each individual again. Generally speaking, it is important as an evaluator to get as much information as possible before rendering an opinion, such as, um, 
diagnosing somebody with something out of the DSM-5 TR or battered spouse syndrome. Yes. In this particular case, um, did you require any additional information to reach your conclusion about the relationship between battered spouse syndrome and the events of this evening? I based my opinion on the on the information that I had. Certainly, if there was more information, my opinion would be subject to change. What was your opinion? Um, my opinion was that um, she did not give me um, enough information to diagnose her with post-traumatic stress disorder at the time that I evaluated her at the jail. And specifically talking about... Judge, good yes. Attorney Owens is very upset. They had a sidebar for quite a while until the judge realized he wasn't going to be able to solve this easily, so they had to clear the courtroom. Members of the jury, thank you so much for your patience. I have a matter I have to discuss with counsel outside of y'all's presence. It may take a little bit more time than just our conference up here, and we don't want to have y'all just hanging out waiting for us to figure out what we're going to do next. So I appreciate your patience. Uh, we're going to excuse you to the deliberation room at this time. Please do not conduct any independent investigation or research as the person, places, things, or charge involved. Involved, and do not have any conversations amongst yourselves or anyone else about those things, and we'll bring you back in as promptly as possible. Thank you. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. <laughs> Rowan, see if you can find me that portion of the transcript that we were addressing as to additional opinions and other depositions and anything in Dr. Warner's deposition that you believe we need to address regarding this opinion as it relates to PTSD. Well, and Judge, it was a, it, it applied to every opinion she was going to express. It started on page 37, line 24. As it relates to Sarah Boone, do you have any diagnosis as it relates to her? And then 38, when she started talking about a generalized anxiety disorder and that she was not for sure whether she, Sarah Boone, had a generalized anxiety disorder versus if it was just an adjustment disorder to being in jail. She also mentioned in that same answer that Sarah Boone had some narcissistic personality traits and that those were my two major diagnoses. And then I questioned her further about that. She explained again on line 17 about general anxiety disorder versus the adjustment disorder and that I hadn't had time to fully formulate that opinion of it. Line 21, I need time to go through my notes and think about it and process it. But I had the other depositions, as you're aware, yesterday, so I had to prepare for those and go through that. So I have, I, I have not had time to process all my notes. And I said on line 39, well, doctor, I'm trying not to inconvenience you. You know, we're set for trial October 7 for jury selection. I anticipate your testimony would be until a little later. So we could discontinue the deposition and then reset it when you've got time to review because obviously I'm not going to want to take your deposition and you have other opinions that are not going to be covered. And then I asked, it's like Mr. J asked, what's your position? He said, conducting discovery after the jury trial starts is completely unacceptable to me. So that's my position. If she needs to issue a supplemental report or if there has become a need for a second deposition, then we can address that. But it would be my position that we need to get this done because the state doesn't have any appellate rights once jury is sworn and jeopardy attaches. And I say on line 23 of page 39, well, you obviously understand my position. I'd like to finish the deposition today as well. But if she is holding out that she may have other opinions and other diagnosis after she has had more time to think, review the paperwork, then obviously that creates an issue. Then she said, but if that happens, I can bring that forward. And then you can add to your deposition at that point if my opinions change after having reviewed further. And I refer to Mr. J. Page 9 of 40, Mr. J says, I think we plow ahead. This is our time with her. Court reporters prepare to give us a transcript by the end of the week, end of the weekend. If something needs to be amended, then she can A, issue a report. B, if we need to take a deposition, an abbreviated deposition on the limited subject matter she is not prepared to testify about to on today, then we can do that. But the notion of halting a deposition that is set for three hours, and then doing a three-hour deposition during trial, especially after jeopardy of the debt, is not what the state would do. Then I respond on page 40, line 23. I'm not suggesting that, Mr. J. I'm suggesting what you just said at the very beginning, which is let's finish. But if she has some supplement, then I would want to take a brief second deposition as it relates to any new diagnosis or opinions. Mr. J responds on page 
Hold on for. Okay. What I'm understanding her to say is right now, there has been a previous diagnosis of an adjustment disorder in some of the records, and she just needs to review her records to see if she thinks that is the best diagnosis that she would give as opposed to a generalized anxiety disorder. And then the witness says, you essentially flipped that, Mr. J, upside down. You got that backwards. Mr. Owens, I agree. I agree. And Dr. Warner, just let the state attorney know. Okay, but, but we're skipping a massive portion of 41 okay. that addresses specifically opinions as it relates to generalized anxiety disorder. Okay, this starts on line 15. So she's saying she has the generalized anxiety disorder, and I'm saying I want to review it more because Sarah Boone had disclosed to the doctor that she had been previously diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder. And so the, the Dr. Werner was considering that, that admission, but she was saying I want to review it more to see if I think it's more of an adjustment disorder to be in a jail judge to being in the correctional setting right now, and that the stressors that she is under right now as opposed to a generalized anxiety disorder. So Mr. J says, Alani 22, okay, so on this topic, if something new comes up, we can address it. But if you have other topics to dispose her on, then I suggest we go on. That's when I say, I agree, I agree, and Dr. Warner, just let the state attorney know it. I know that you may be, you know, we are on short time. If, if you do review your notes over the weekend, or whatnot, and formulate any other opinions, just let the state attorney know, and I will address it. Line seven, the witness, Dr. Warner says, absolutely. Do you want me to continue reading, or? If there's portions you want to highlight for me, I mean, I have the transcript, I'm following along with that you. Was, that was the general understanding that we had about all diagnoses, all opinions that she may have. She starts talking about the mental status exam that she gave her, and then she, page 43, line A, she said narcissistic, she said she has narcissistic personality disorder traits. Or I asked that question, you know. That's how she answered. She goes through a little bit of that, paraphrasing, she talks about the grandiose component or criteria that she met. And then on page 45, I asked her what other criteria would tend to indicate that she was a narcissist. And the answer by Dr. Warner, I didn't say that she was. I said that she has narcissistic traits. And that was the examples. That Judge, was, excuse me for interrupting, but can we uh, lasso uh, this back in? To I, I'm, I'm very, I understand that's what the depot reflects. But the non-objection, which led to objection, pertains to an opinion specifically about post-traumatic stress disorder. At this time, no opinion is being referenced nor does the call of the question pertain to narcissistic personality traits or a diagnosis of narcissism. The question pertains to PTSD. All right, page 46, line one, question, okay? Do you feel like she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder? Line three, answer. She didn't give me criteria with regards to that. She discussed having fear and anxiety of his family and fear that they would come into the jail or have someone else come into the jail and harm them. She talked about that. And she spoke about, you know, having recollections, remembering abuse from George during the evaluation. Question 13, 113, 146. But you don't believe that she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, in your opinion? Answer, line 15. No, I would have to look through, back through my notes, to see if she fully met the criteria. Question, line 17. Can you explain why you don't think she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder? Answer, line 19. No, I didn't say one way or the other. I would have to look back through my notes for that. Line 21. Question, is that something that you may, in the future, give an opinion about after some time reflecting and reviewing your notes? Line 24. Answer, I may. Number 25. Question, okay. And that's something you will let the lawyers know about if that changes. Answer, line two of page 47. Yes, that's specific to the post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. So at the time of this deposition, when I asked her specifically. So what's the legal objection? What are the legal grounds of the objection? I would not take that deposition, Judge. When she said, I have not had time sufficiently to answer these questions, these diagnoses, these opinions, if this wasn't set for a definitive date that you had already told me it's not going to be continued, I would not, I would refuse to take that deposition. Mm -hmm. But under the promises from the state, 
What are the legal what are the legal grounds of your objection? I'm familiar with the background. I'm familiar with the time frame. I'm familiar with all the dates and the depots and the coordination and everything we had to do to get this all teed up before trial. What are the legal grounds of your objection? I understand the backdrop. I don't I don't know if there's a legal ground other than we had an agreement as attorneys, as parties, that I would be notified of a change of opinion and I would be allowed to take a second deposition. That's the only thing I know to object to. Okay. Because I was not given that opportunity, which was an agreement between the four. Response. Judge, I don't appreciate the implications that they're making. Um, what I would proffer with this witness is we spoke yesterday. I asked her if she had any change in her opinion about any of the diagnoses. She said no. And I just, I asked, well, then my position, uh, my understanding of her position is that it doesn't matter whether she had PTSD or not, because what Ms. Boone said at the time was that she zipped Mr. Torres up into the suitcase. They were both laughing. And once he was already secured in the suitcase, she became angry and then did all the things that she did. My expected answers from the doctor based on a very brief conversation yesterday and this morning was that if I asked her whether or not PTSD or BSS had anything to do uh, with this particular uh, case, that her answer would be, it doesn't matter because of what she stated happened. I'm not asking her about her diagnosis of PTSD. I'm not going to be going into narcissism. I'm not going to go into whether or not she ever delineated the difference between adjustment disorder or anxiety, because my understanding of what she told me was that none of this matters. None of this matters because of what she said to us during the evaluation. But the question was, and I may have to ask Madam Court Reporter, Court Reporter to read it back, but my memory of what the question was is, have you formulated an opinion with regard to PTSD? And my expected answer was, it doesn't matter because of what she said during the evaluation. Okay. Unfortunately, that was not the answer that came from the witness. The I answer was a definitive no. Ernie's fault. I, I'm not casting blame. I'm just... Right. We're going back over of what was asked and what was said. Okay. Yes. Judge, and that's his position that post traumatic stress disorder that doesn't apply in this case and that he, I'm sure, reflected his opinion to the expert. But that doesn't mean that that's my opinion that post traumatic stress does not apply. Yeah, that's irrelevant for the purposes of this argument. Well, there, there are discussions and him feeling like it didn't apply. Okay, as an officer of the court, he just told me he spoke to the expert yesterday and the opinions hadn't changed. And the opinion that was offered at the deposition was, I'm not sure. And based on what he had proffered as to what he expected the answer to be, the answer was not, it was not going to be any different. It was it, it's not applicable. It doesn't matter for, because of what she told me. That's unfortunately not the answer that was given. So what is it that you're asking me to do at this, at this time, Mr. Owens? I'm asking. I don't know if we need to proffer the entire testimony of this witness because opinions and diagnoses have apparently changed. I think I have a right to take a second deposition before she testifies. What other opinions, Mr. J, if any, are going to be offered by Dr. Warner? Thanks, proffer? Yes. All right. You've been present for all this hearing. Yes, doctor? Yes. Uh, am I misrepresenting any of our conversations? No. All right. And so... If I ask you um, if battered spouse syndrome or PTSD has any relationship to the facts of the case as the defendant relayed them to you, what would be your answer? That it's not related to the incident as she reported it. Okay. And if I ask you, therefore, if there are any prior instances of violence, would that change your opinion? What would your answer be? No. And if you reviewed any other materials or materials, would that change your opinion based on what she told you about what happened that evening? No. Judge, number one, she's given a legal opinion. Number two, it's a discovery violation. What is the legal opinion? That post-traumatic stress disorder doesn't apply in this case. Dr. Harper testified it did, and that's what experts do. I would like to have known that, and that was going to be her opinion before today. That's not a change in testimony. That's when, when is that a change in, in the deposition? I'm, no, 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 no. This is a, a, a 
a 87 page transcript. You're objecting. You have the burden to establish your objection. Give me a minute. I'll read through it and find where I asked her. I mean, this isn't the first time I've looked at this deposition. The state provided it to me when we had the hearing on whether or not battered spouse would be permitted. And the state provided specific highlights for me to look at. At no point in time did the defense say, look at this, look at this, look at this in her deposition when we had that hearing. So other than what's being provided to me right now and what's been testified to this morning, I don't know what opinions she has. All I know in coming into today is what the basis of her opinion was specifically with regard to any of the statements that Ms. Boone had provided, which was the whole crux of the state's motion to prevent battered spouse from coming into evidence. Judge, if you look at page 66, question, okay, so other than the couple of hours that you intend to maybe reflect on your notes and anything else, any other work that you intend to do on this case? Answer, 23, no, sir, not that I'm aware of. Line 24, question. And you've expressed all your opinions, at least generally, here today. Answer, page 67, line 1. Yes, sir. Question. Uh, then I go into these. Then on 67, line 7. Question. Just double dog short. You admit that you have no other opinions other than the ones you've expressed here today. Line 10. Answer. That I've been asked about. If I'm asked something else that I'll offer it, question. And you've been provided all the resources you need to rely on and express your opinions. Line 14, answer. I have based an opinion on the resources that I've been provided. If there's other things out there to be provided that may or may not change my opinion, I believe it's a discovery violation because I should have been notified that there was going to be a change in opinions here today. And we had an agreement that I was going to be allowed to retake the deposition not be ambushed in the middle of a trial with a new opinion. What new opinions are different based on what Mr. J proffered the testimony is going to be? I have to ask Madam Clerk to reread the question and the answer from the expert. It's been so long now. Madam Clerk or Madam Fort, are you able to reread the portion of the proffer as to what Mr. J asked of the witness? You've been present for all of this here. And yes, doctor. Answer yes. Question, am I misrepresenting any of our conversations? Answer, no. Question, all right. So if I ask you if battered spouse syndrome or PTSD has any relationship to the facts of this case and the defendant relate them to you, what would be your answer? Question, that it's not related to the incident as she recorded it. Question, okay. And if I ask you, therefore, if there are any prior instances, instances of violence, would that change your opinion? What would your answer be? Answer, no. Question. If you reviewed any other materials or materials, would that change your opinion based on what she told you about what happened that evening? Answer, no. Question. All right, that's it. I don't think that's the very beginning before I object. What was asked was to read back the proffer. I, th- I thought. I was. I thought I was asking to go back to the very beginning when the question was asked, and then her response and my objection to it. The what was specifically asked was to to the proffer because the question before the court was whether the proffered opinions are at odds with what was testified to during the course of the deposition. There's the question that was asked and the answer that was given affirmatively provided an opinion as to PTSD. I think Mr. J admits that. Mr. J has advised the court that's not what he was hoping the answer would be. The answer was supposed to be something different as identified in the proffer, which is why I had Madam Court Reporter read back the proffer. So the question Mr. Owens posed to you is whether the proffered opinions that Madam Court Reporter just read back to us are different than what was provided in the deposition. How so? He tended to explain in the proffer some legal reason why it did not apply in her opinion. That was not discussed in any way in the deposition. Okay. My question is specific as to opinions. Her opinions were as to battered spouse syndrome or post-traumatic stress disorder. 
and their relationship to the case based on the defendant's responses. The answer is not related to the incident as the defendant reported. Those are the opinions, as I understand them based on the proffer, as it relates to battered spouse syndrome and post-traumatic stress disorder. I think I'd refer to page 46, line 13 was the question, but you don't believe that she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder in your opinion? The answer is no. I'm going to have to look through, back through my notes to see if she fully met that criteria. Question 17, can you explain why you don't think she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder? Line 19, answer no. I didn't say one way or the other. I'm going to have to look back through my notes for that. Question number 21, is that something that you may... In the future, give an opinion about after some time reflecting and reviewing your notes. 24, I met. 25, okay, and that's something you will let the lawyers know about if that changes. Line two, yes, that's fundamentally, substantially, materially different from what she's testified as it relates to post traumatic stress as it applies in this case. In the proffer? Excuse me? In the proffer? She's not rendering an unless I misunderstood the proffer. She's not rendering an opinion on PTSD and whether or not Miss Boone suffers from it. She led me to believe that she was trying to decide whether or not Sarah Boone suffered from post traumatic stress. Now in the proffer, it, they're they're claiming that post traumatic stress does not apply. I don't know what the initial question was. We we haven't had that read back when it was first going on when the question was asked, and I believe she rendered an opinion. Um, and I. Again, like that, and read, we read that. What the initial question was, what the response was, because it didn't. I know I objected. I can't even remember it now. But I know I objected because I knew it was inconsistent. With you me. asked to approach, and then you explained that the question was in, it was not something that was framed in the deposition. Multiple times I asked you for a legal objection. And it wasn't until right before or right after we sent the jury out that you provided some legal objection. You know, it, Madam, if you want Madam Court Porter to go back and read the question that led us to where we are right now in the answer, I'm totally on board with that. I have a memory of what it was, but uh, nothing like. Does that. Can I get the first question of the proffer? If BSS or PTSD has any, can you reread that? So I'd Let's just that. reread the entire proffer, just so that it's a clear soup to nuts, alpha to the omega, what the proffer was. Madam Court Porter, if you could be so kind. All right, so do you have a question? You've been credit for all of this hearing. Yes, Doctor. Answer, yes. Question, am I misrepresenting any of our conversations? Answer, no. Question, all right. So if I ask you about better spouse syndrome or PTSD has any relationship to the facts of this case that would relay them to you, what would be your answer? Answer, that it's not related to the incident as she reported it. Question, okay. And if I ask you, therefore, if there are any prior instances of violence, would that change your opinion? What would your answer be? Answer, no. And question, if you reviewed any other materials or materials, would that change your opinion based on what she told you about what happened that evening? Answer, no. Question, all right, that's it. And then if she could go back to the initial question, what was their opinion? Answer, my opinion was that she did not give me enough information to diagnose her with post-traumatic stress disorder at the time that I evaluated her at the jail. Maybe we have a previous question. And in this particular case, did you require any additional information to reach your conclusion about the relationship between battered spouse syndrome and the events of this evening? Answer. I based my opinion on the information that I had. Certainly, if there was more information, my opinion would have started to change. That question and answer, she gave a differing opinion than what she gave in her deposition, which subject to the agreement we had, I should have been noticed. Number two, with the proffer, it seems that she's going to find that post-traumatic stress disorder did not apply to the facts as related by Sarah Bennett. And that is an opinion that I needed to know about. And I asked throughout this deposition, and at the very end, some general, if your opinions, if you have any new opinions or anything new that differs from what you said here today, please notify the lawyer, of course, to that effect. So it's an evidentiary issue. I've got a right to be prepared for the trial through discovery 
to know what the witnesses are going to opine. And this is a discovery violation based on two things. One, her initial answer to the question that I objected to, and then two, the proffer is a new opinion. It's a discovery violation. I ask that the witness be stricken. Any response? Judge, I think it's clear from my original question that the intent that I stated was the intent of my question to get the answer that I intended to get was what the question was intended to, to, to elicit from the witness. As far as the discovery violations and, and continued attacks, I'm just not, cons I'm not, I'm not convinced he understands what the answer means or what it's going to be. The answer isn't going to be, Ms. Boone didn't have PTSD, hence, therefore, batter spouse syndrome doesn't apply in this case. Mm -hmm. What I believe she's going to say, and what I believe I've been saying she's going to say, based on our conversations, was irrespective of whether anybody believes Ms. Boone had BSS or PTSD, it is irrelevant because of what Ms. Boone told her happened at the time of the event. That is not a discovery violation. She was specific in saying, if you have any questions you want to ask me, I'll give you an opinion. That is exactly what she said. On page 67 of the deposition, a response to a question that starts at line 7. Question, just double dog sure. You admit that you have no other opinion other than the ones you've expressed here today. Answer, that I've been asked about. If I'm asked about something else, that I'll offer it. They didn't ask about the interplay of the facts with uh, the relevance of the syndrome. That's that, not the case. Any other argument? The totality, if you read that deposition, when all the time. I specifically asked you, Mr. Owens, to point out for me what, what, excuse me, I specifically asked for you to point out specific portions of the deposition that are at odds with either A, the opinion that was previously given, or B, what was proffered to. You have provided me pages 45, 46 of the deposition relating to specific opinions on whether or not Ms. Boone suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. Are there any other portions of the depot that you would like to point out for me? I am not going to read an 87-page deposition and continue to wait or waste our jurors' time as we try to find a solution for the situation that is now before us. If there are specific portions of this deposition that are at odds, the opinions have been proffered and or provided so far. I would ask you to direct my attention to them. Well, the ones that I expect Other than what you've already identified. The ones that I expressed, and that just the understanding that we had that she, in the pages that I have talked about previously here today, the pages that I referred to about our agreement that she was going to let me know if there were any opinions that that she had in addition to the opinions that she gave in the transcript. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other argument, Mr. Jay? Nothing. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. The court has had the opportunity to listen to the proffer as read back by Madam Court Reporter, Re the read back of the opinion that was previously offered, um, the portions of the deposition which have been, been highlighted by the defense specifically pertain to opinions by the defendant as to whether or not the defendant suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. That opinion is not being offered. The opinion pertains to the relationship of battered spouse syndrome and or PTSD as it relates to the facts of the case as the defendant has relayed them to you and that they are not related. However, the deposition is identified by the uh, defense identifies that if there were any additional opinions that there would be notification. So the court at this point in time as there has been an alleged discovery violation in accordance with binding precedent by the 6th District Court of Appeal, which is binding on this trial court, and Young v. State, 369, Southern 3rd, 1243, at pinpoint 1248, the court is now going to conduct a discovery violation or discovery Richardson hearing. State any other arguments with regard to the elements of a Richardson hearing? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other arguments with regard to the elements of a Richardson hearing, Mr. Owens? No, no, other than I understood she did give an opinion about post-traumatic stress in that initial series of post -traumatic. Okay. All right. The court, again, reviewing the proffer and the opinion, finds that the state's violation was inadvertent 
based on the proffer uh, by the state, which was agreed to by Dr. Werner as to the conversation they had last night, as to the opinions and whether or not that they had changed. However, I do find that that violation is substantial with regard to the opinions based on the uh, testimony in Dr. Werner's deposition that any other additional opinions would be notified to the defense. As it relates to the third category, the uh, effect on the defendant to properly prepare for trial. Uh, although the questions in the deposition as highlighted by the defense so far are um, do not address the opinions being currently offered, I do find that it had some impact on the ability um, for the defendant to properly prepare for, for trial. As it relates to the opinion that was previously provided um, as read back, specifically, my opinion was that she did not give enough information to diagnose her with PTSD at the time of the evaluation at the jail. What is your position, if any, with regard to that opinion now that the jury has heard it? Mr. Owens, because my question is, do you want it struck? On that issue, we'll, we'll address it on cross-examination. So you are you do not want uh, it to be struck and you do not want a curative instruction? Well, I'm going to question her about post-traumatic stress, so it's going to come out um, through my cross from the deposition about what she said, and then it's inconsistent with what she said here today, so I'm going to want to rely on that question or that answer. Okay, all right. Ms. Boone, you have you been paying attention to the questions and answers and the readbacks of both the proffered testimony and the opinion testimony? Yes. And are you on board with the strategy not to seek to strike that opinion? Yes. Thank you. With regard to the proffered testimony, I'm going to permit now in open court, and I will oversee the deposition for you, Mr. Owens, to inquire as to those opinions. Sorry. With regard to the proffered opinions, the court will oversee a deposition now, and you may proceed with regard to the proffered opinions. And I believe that will provide a cure for the discovery violation under the Richardson violation based on your uh, request not to strike the prior opinion. And since you're going to utilize that on cross, I find that the prejudice is limited. But with regard to the new opinions, I will give you the opportunity to depose her now, curing the prejudice at that point in time. You may proceed. Dr. Warren. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. At some point, the state attorney notified you that you were to come today. Correct. Did you and the state attorney have a discussion about your testimony? Yes. When was that discussion? Last night. So y'all talked on the phone last night? Yeah. Have y'all had any discussions since the phone conversation last night? Obviously this morning. And uh, how long was the phone conversation? Um, less than five minutes. How long was the face-to-face -face conversation? Less than five minutes. Did y'all discuss that your testimony would be that you did not have enough information that you gathered from Sarah Boone to form an opinion as to whether or not she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes. Yeah that my opinion hadn't changed, that I didn't have enough information. Did the state attorney speak to you about that it didn't matter whether you had an opinion if you didn't feel like the facts that Sarah Boone had given you as it relates to um, the facts and issue in this case, that you didn't, if, if you didn't feel like post-traumatic stress even applied, then you could answer that way? Correct. That was my opinion. Correct. But did he, did he present that to you initially? For you to form an opinion about it? No, my opinion was that it didn't apply because of the um, the way that she described the the um, the incident to me. Was that your opinion back when I took your deposition? Yes. When did you form that opinion? When she described the incident to me. Why didn't you let us know that was your opinion at the time that I took your deposition? Do you remember me asking you any other opinions that you may have as it relates to this case? Specifically about that. I understand that, but you, you're saying you formed that opinion prior to the deposition, correct? Yes. The state attorney and I discussed that on the way out of the jail, as a matter of fact. After the deposition? No, sir. After the evaluation. Okay. On the way out of the jail. All right. And I asked you. Were there any other opinions that you may express at trial after you had discussed that with a state attorney prior to the deposition? Is that correct? Yes. And so you were aware that I wanted, I didn't want to be ambushed at trial. I wanted to know any and all 
opinions that you may be expressing in the Sarah, Sarah Boone case. I didn't know what specific information you wanted, sir. That's why you had a deposition. I answered your questions. I don't know what all information you want me to, to provide to you. So because I didn't ask you specifics, you felt like you didn't have to respond specifically. Sir, I answered all of your questions. And as I said, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that, that I'm asked. I don't know what questions you want me to answer. But, but you know that this was a central issue in the case. Did you not? Um, your opinion, your opinion yeah. is relating to a central issue in this case. Correct. You're aware Sarah Boone's on trial for murder. And you had this opinion when I was taking your deposition and I was asking you specifics about any opinions that you may be expressing in the trial of Sarah Boone and you did not disclose it. Well, I told you that I would answer any questions that were asked of me. I have a number of opinions. I know that I don't feel that she's suffering from major depressive disorder. I didn't offer that opinion either. Um, I have a number of, of opinions. That's all the future. Mr. J, anything else? Just making sure you want to inquire. Uh, this is your opportunity, Ms. Rowans. Because that was more just about... Inquire about what? This is your opportunity to inquire. You are conducting a deposition. This is your opportunity and your only opportunity to cure any prejudice that we've identified with regard to those proffered opinions as it relates to the relationship of battered spouse syndrome and or post-traumatic stress disorder as proffered. The problem is now, Judge, is I've got my expert and I we weren't aware, you know, how in these type cases, the experts are allowed to listen to the testimony of the other experts and read the depositions of the other experts. Um, Dr. Warner, were you given the opportunity to read Dr. Harper's deposition? I was. I mean, that's standard operating procedure in these type cases. And now um, I'm taking a deposition on the fly. And then I, I haven't had a chance to speak with my expert about those opinions and whether or not uh, that would change her opinion. Um, it just puts me in a very difficult situation, but I'm, if I'm, if I'm ordered to continue the deposition, I will. That's your, your, that's your decision. It's not an order. I'm just saying that this is the opportunity to cure that Richardson issue. You asked previously to strike the expert. I am disinclined to do that. The case law says that is an extraordinary remedy, one which I am not going to permit. Dr. Warren, you realize you're in a courtroom. Yes, sir. And we're waiting on the jury. On the trial of Sarah Boone. Yes. Are there any other opinions that you intend to express in this trial that you have not disclosed to me in the deposition or you have not disclosed here today under oath? I'm happy to answer any questions that I'm asked. Are you refusing to answer my question about any other opinions that you intend to express here today as it relates to Sarah Boone, who is on trial for murder in the second degree? The, the catch-all vague question that Mr. Owens wants to ask this expert witness about any and all things she may or may not have, 99 out of 100 attorneys will come in here and say, that's not how you do depositions with expert witnesses. You have to ask specific questions. Anytime you ask a question like that of an expert, the expert is always going to say, please ask me a specific question. And that's what she did then. That's what she's doing now. Um, it's, it's unfair uh, and vague to ask somebody, tell me every opinion you have. The judge. Yes, sir. We're in the middle of a trial. She's fixing to testify. She's had conversations with the state attorney. She knows what she's going to be asked in forms of opinions that she's going to express. That's why she's here, to help the jury understand the science that relates to the law and express opinions. I mean, for me to ask, we're playing hide the ball here in the middle of a trial. I disagree that there's any hiding of the ball. There's been a proffer that's been read multiple times as to the scope of the opinions regarding to battered spouse syndrome and post-traumatic stress disorder and its relationship to the facts of the case as the defendant represented them. And the answer is they are not relatable to the incident as relayed by the defendant. That is the opinion that have been proffered. All right, can I continue with my deposition? Yes, sir. 
Dr. Werner, do you recall expressing that you wanted more time to reflect as to whether or not Sarah Boone suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes, that I was going to review my notes to see if I had enough information in there to support or negate that. Don't. What additional information would you need for you to express an opinion that she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder? So she did not give me information regarding uh, the presence of intrusive symptoms. She didn't give me information regarding persistent avoidance. Um, she didn't give me um, information regarding alterations in arousal or reactivity. Anything else? No. Would you agree you failed to ask her those questions? I asked her if there was any other important information that she felt like she needed to share with me at the end of my evaluation, and she said no. So a catch-all question. Correct. Were there any other personality disorders in that what you do as a psychiatrist? You, you diagnose an opinion, uh, express opinions about whether people suffer from personality disorders? Correct. Are there any other personality disorders that you have formed opinions about Sarah Boone that you intend to express? No. So narcissism, you did not find? I um, found narcissistic traits. In terms of your opinion that she suffers from narcissistic personality disorder? No, sir. I said narcissistic traits. Okay. So you don't have an opinion that she suffers from narcissistic personality disorder? Correct. She suffers. She has. She displays narcissistic traits. You express an opinion that she suffers from alcohol use syndrome? Alcohol use disorder. Alcohol use disorder. Correct. Is that still your opinion? Yes. Anxiety disorder. Is it your opinion she suffers from the anxiety disorder? No. You recall in your deposition indicating that she, you felt like she suffered from either anxiety disorder or adjustment disorder. That's correct. And you've changed that opinion now? Um, I have. Uh, I'm leaning towards the uh, adjustment disorder secondary to her uh, situation. So you haven't formed an opinion as to whether or not she suffers from general anxiety disorder or adjustment disorder? Correct. You agree that she suffered from trauma as it relates to the domestic violence history that she expressed to you from the intimate partner violence with George Torres? Yes, as reported by her. Yes. Do you have anything to dispute that? No. In your opinion, does she suffer from any form of psychosis? No. Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from acute stress disorder? No. Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from intimate partner violence? Yes, I think that there is enough um, history to, uh, to of a, the volatile relationship between the two of them. Because of that, do you believe that she, Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? Uh, she may be the criteria for that. May. So... It's possible. Is yes. that is that your opinion? Yes. Definitively, you can't say. Um, she, there's a history of her having that. Yes. So you agree she suffers from battered spouse syndrome? Yeah. I believe we've covered anxiety disorder, narcissism, battered spouse syndrome, and alcohol use disorder. Mm -hmm. Are there any other opinions that you intend to express as it relates to that or any other psychological condition of Sarah Boone? That's all the questions I have. Any other arguments at this time? No, Judge, just the one I've already made. Okay, all right. Uh, the court has conducted its Richardson hearing and made its findings. The court, as previously identified, will not strike the expert, as that remedy is quite draconian, and I will not do so based on the um, questions that were asked as highlighted uh, by the defense uh, and the opinions that were offered. Uh, the specific areas for which opinions are being offered were not inquired into, but the deposition did leave it open that I'll ask, I'll ask questions about any other opinions that I'm asked about or anything else that I'm asked during the course of the trial, specifically page 59, 22 through 26 on one, page 60, lines 11 through 25. So in the abundance of caution, the court has permitted that in-court deposition. Anything else, sir? No. Anything else, State? No, Your Honor. All right, let's bring back in our jury. You can continue your inquiry, sir. Okay, thank you all. You can be seated. Members of the jury, thank you again for your patience. We had some issues I had to address with counsel outside of your presence, and we're going to continue the um, 
State's rebuttal case this morning. Mr. Jay, you may continue your inquiry, sir. State would move to strike the last response as non-responsive. Approach. Your objections overruled. All right. Irrespective of whether anybody has an opinion about whether Ms. Boone was suffering from PTSD or BSS, irrespective of that, based on your evaluation of Ms. Boone and what she relayed to you about the facts of the case, does PTSD or BSS have any relation? Objection less than asked and answered. Overruled. No. And what particular part of her uh, statements about the incident is that? Um, the whole part where she's describing um, the part about playing hide and seek and that they were having a good time, they were laughing. Um, when he got in the suitcase, when she found him, they were enjoying themselves. She zipped him up. They were still laughing, you know, having a good time. Um, all of that isn't consistent with um, her having a feeling of she had imminent risk or imminent, you know, there was an imminent risk of harm that she would need to protect herself. Yes. Members of the jury, I have something I've got to discuss with counsel outside of y'all's presence. Same instruction. Please don't conduct any independent investigation or research on the person, places, thing, or charge involved. And don't have any conversations among yourselves or anyone else with regard to that. And we'll bring you back in as promptly as possible. Thank you. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. Madam Court Reporter, when you're ready. Hi, Mr. J. Question. All right. Irrespective of whether anybody has an opinion about whether this building was suffering from PTSD or BSS, irrespective of that, based on her evaluation of this building, what she relate to you about the facts of this case? Does PTSD or BSS have a relation? Mr. Owens, objection, as an answer. The court overruled the witness, no. Question, and what particular part of her statements about the incident is that? Answer, the whole part where she's describing the part of about playing hide and seek, they were having a good time, they were laughing. When he got into the suitcase, when she found him, they were enjoying themselves. She zipped him, she zipped him, they were still laughing, having a good time. All of that isn't consistent with her having a feeling that she had imminent risk or imminent risk of harm. Any other argument, Mr. Owens? That invades the province of the jury. That's a decision whether or not she had imminent risk of harm or perceived an imminent threat. It's a question to the jury. This expert can express opinions on science, on medicine, but not on the ultimate issue of fact and explain to the jury that this defense doesn't qualify. That you should rely on me as an expert, and I'm going to make the decision for you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, by telling you that under the facts expressed to me by Sarah Boone, she was not perceiving an imminent threat at the time. Response. Because it's not an objectionable opinion. It's not an opinion on the ultimate issue. It's an opinion upon the applicability of a particular set of evidence that uh, the testimony that the defense has offered um, called battered spouse syndrome to kind of help explain a portion of the justifiable use of deadly force or non-deadly force instructions. She's not up there saying Ms. Brune uh, was unjustified in doing what she did. She's not saying uh, that justifiable use of force doesn't apply. What she is saying is in her opinion, based on the facts that she relies on, given by the defendant herself just a couple of weeks ago, that this particular set of testimony and evidence that has been offered through their expert, Dr. Harper, um, doesn't apply. This is no different than one expert coming in and saying, well, yeah, you, you can know that the defendant was sane at the time, despite his mental illness, because he ran from the police, he hid, he concealed ev evidence, so on and so forth. And therefore, because of those facts, Insanity doesn't apply. And the defense expert may come in and say, well, you know, insanity does apply because my client, after stabbing her mother to death, uh, called 911, was speaking unintelligibly and singing, and greeted the officers at the door with a pair of knives and wouldn't drop the knives and was incoherent for 12 hours after the offense. Therefore, based on those facts, the expert says, well, 
insanity does apply, it's not becoming a lawyer, it's not becoming the juror, it is explaining a particular type of expert testimony, um, and it just happens to, to disagree with Dr. Harper's. And Dr. Harper came in and said that BSS does apply and that she was in constant fear. And the reason she's in constant fear is because of all the past uh, episodes and whatnot. It's, it's permissible testimony. Any other argument, Mr. Owens? That's totally wrong. He claims, the prosecutor claims Dr. Harper came in and said BSS does apply. That's true. But he just got through saying and trying to get the, the witness to say BSS is it, it, it's not to be regarded. Post-traumatic stress is not to be regarded. It doesn't even come into play. Post-traumatic stress disorder, badger sprouse syndrome does not even come into play because at the time she was facing, according to this witness, no imminent risk of harm. Therefore, you can discount everything you hear, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, about battered spouse syndrome. How does that have anything to do with whether or not it's an improper legal opinion under 90.703? It is. It's the ultimate issue of fact in this case because self-defense has been alleged by the defense. And the issue for this jury is whether or not Sarah Boone had the right to defend herself with force, deadly force or non-deadly force, based on her beliefs and impressions at the time, whether they were reasonable under the jury instructions, under the special jury instructions that are going to be applied for battered spouse syndrome, under the jury instructions, under justifiable use of deadly force, whether her perceptions about the threat was imminent and whether it was appropriate or reasonable to act the way she did. This expert is trying to say that she was not facing imminent risk of harm at the time. Thank you both for your arguments. Court is going to overrule your objection, find that it is not an ultimate issue of fact as addressed by 90.703. The court specifically relies on Dinkins versus State 976, Southern 2nd 660 at pinpoint 661. In that case, a psychologist testifies in, a, in that, in the instant case in Dinkins, the psychologist's opinions were not legal conclusions. The psychologist did not opine on the defendant's guilt or innocence. Rather, the psychologist opined only as to whether the victim was, quote, mentally defective, end quote, and capable of consent to intercourse. Although the opinions did go to ultimate issues in the case, Florida case law, or Florida law, excuse me, expressly, expressly provides that an expert witness may render such opinion, see section 90.703 Florida statutes, which provides that testimony in the form of an opinion or inference otherwise admissible is not objectionable because it includes an ultimate issue to be decided by the trier of fact. Thus, the jury had the power to accept or reject the opinions and was not bound by such. For those reasons, your objection is overruled. Madam Court, Court I'm just going to ask you to read the question and the answer. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Let's, he is going to have Madam Court Reporter read back the question and the answer, and then he is going to have no other questions for this witness. Basis. It was asked and answered. Overruled. There was a pending objection. I'm allow the state to re ask it so it's clear based on that objection. Judge, it's 11 30. I'm going to be at least an hour. For mine. We're going to begin your cross examination after we're done with the. After the state advises the jury in open court, uh, there are no more questions. Let's go ahead and bring back in our panel. You may be seated. Thank you. State, you may proceed. Question and answer. Madam Court Reporter. Question for Mr. J. All right. Irrespective of whether anybody has any opinion about whether his bill was suffering from PTSD or BSS, irrespective of that, based on your evaluation of the spoon. What should be relayed to you about the facts of this case? Does PTSD and DSS have any relation? Mr. Owens' objection asked and answered. The court overruled the witness, no. Question, in what particular part of her statements about the incident is that? Answer, the whole part where she's describing the target about playing hide and seek, they were having a good time, they were laughing. When he got in the suitcase, when she found him, they were enjoying themselves. She zipped them. They were still laughing, having had a good time. All of that isn't consistent with their having a feeling of she had intimate risk or intimate risk of harm. No further questions. Any cross examination? Yeah. You may proceed, sir. Dr. Warner, good morning. What all did you consider 
collaterally as it relates to your opinions you're expressing here today? Um, I had a number of documents that I reviewed all the other list. Um, I had um, the Orange County Sheriff's Office investigation report. I had a transcript of a two-hour interview of um, the defendant. I had a that's the, that's the two-hour interrogation with Detective Lowen and Detective Cops. It was a an interview. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. It was labeled an interview. Um, then I had a transcript of a second interview uh, the next day of Ms. Boone. I had um, medical records from Aspire Health and Advent Health. And then I had some cell phone records. And I also uh, received um, the deposition of your expert. The deposition of Dr. Julie Harper? Yes. Okay. And did you... Did you listen to Dr. Julie Harper's uh, depos or testimony in this trial of Sarah Boone? No. Do you agree you have a right to do that? Uh, yes. And did you listen to Sarah Boone's testimony in the trial of this case? No. You agree you have a right to do that? Yes. And you elected not to listen to her testimony before expressing opinions here today? Overruled. Um, I did not have time to do that. You did not have time to do that? Correct. She's on trial for murder. Yes. Okay. Sustained. You said you considered some text messages from Sarah Boone's phone? Cor I reviewed them, correct. Would it be fair to say that of those text messages, they're not necessarily overly relevant? Yes. Regarding these text messages that you provided, did that inform your opinion that you just expressed about the inapplicability of BSS or PTSD to the facts of this case? No. no I'm sorry. Did it apply to your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? No. Are those, that information, when you, when you express opinions in court about a patient or about an individual, you rely on your personal assessment as well as the documents and evidence that you're provided and asked to review. Are you not? Correct. And in this case, your testimony is that you reviewed all that information before you interviewed Sarah Boone for two and a half hours on October the 2nd of 2024, 20, 22 days ago. Correct. So you had the information. Yes. The documents. You read the documents. Yes. You read all the text messages. Correct. And you're, you're going to express some opinions here today. Are you not? Correct. You're going to express some opinions about narcissism, whether or not she had. Yes. Objections overruled. You may proceed. Ma'am, is it fair to say in your evaluation of Sarah Boone on October the 2nd of 2024 that you felt like the text messages that you received from the state attorney are not relevant to your evaluation of Sarah Boone. I wasn't sure whose phone number it was. In all honesty, we discussed that in the deposition, and I wasn't sure. I have no proof of who actually sent the text, who actually had possession of the phone and put the text, any of the text in. Well, I was there for the deposition, was I not? Or I appeared by Zoom, did I not? No, so you were present in person. Okay, I'm trying to think. Oh, deposition. You the deposition. By Zoom, yes. You appear by Zoom, I appear by Zoom, the state appears yes. by Zoom. Yes. And we discussed that these were the phone records from Sarah Boone's phone. Yes. Okay. And at that time, you said they're not necessarily overly relevant to your evaluation. Did you not say that? Um, I don't recall specifically. I'm happy to, to look at it. Can I approach the witness? You may. I have it. If you just refer me to the page. Just a moment. You got it? I do. Page 14. My question is at line three. Your answer begins at line five. Correct. And you agree that any... Let him finish. Let him finish. Well, I'm going on. I'm, I'm going to ask another question about the text messages, Judge. You just said line five. Approach. Dr. Warren, did that refresh your recollection about uh, our discussions about the text messages in your evaluation? Yes. And would you agree that they're not necessarily overly relevant to your evaluation of Sarah Boone. Correct. And you 
agree that after reviewing all those text messages, that there was nothing that stuck out to you that caused you to pause and feel like they may have some impact on your evaluations of Sarah Boone. Sure. Here. Can she answer the question? Have her answer the question first. I'm not sure what you're referring to in the deposition. Page 14. My question is at line 21. Your answer is at line 25. Correct. And I said, no, as I said, it made me aware that they had a volatile relationship. But my question to you specifically is, is there anything in the text messages that stuck out to you that caused you to pause and feel like that that may have some impact on your evaluations? Correct. And you agree your answer is no. As I said, it made me aware. That's not my complete answer. Okay, well, let's talk. First, you said no. As I said, it made me aware that they had a volatile. It's not my complete answer. I know, Dr. Warner, but didn't you say no to me? That was your first sentence was no. It's not my complete answer. I understand. I'm going to let you answer that. But when I asked you if there was anything in the text messages that caused you to pause and it would in some way affect the impact on your evaluation, your answer to me was no. It's not my complete answer. I understand. But was your answer not to me no? Yes, but that is not right. Now, at the same time, Dr. Warner, Dr. Warner, at the same time, you expressed that they had a volatile relationship. That is not the totality of my answer either. Okay, and I'm I'm going to get to it. Okay. But part of your answer was that they had a volatile relationship. Correct. And this is a relation to my question about the text messages. You agree? Yes. After you said no, you said they had a volatile relationship and that she text messaged calling him an idiot, a fucking idiot, for overdrafting her account. Correct. And in those text messages, there was some reference to domestic violence between the two. Correct. And that demonstrated to you that they had a violent relationship. Correct. And do you not agree that that evidence of a violent, volatile relationship had an effect on you expressing your opinion here today that Sarah Boone suffered from battered spouse syndrome? Members of the jury, uh, it is 1155. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and take our lunch break. With that, members of the jury, we're going to be in recess till 1.30, and we'll pick up at that point in time. Thank you so much for your service. You all may be seated. State, anything else? No, Drew, thank you. Defense? All right, we'll see you at 1.30. Thank you very much. Court's in recess. Ms. Boone is seated at counsel's table wearing the same clothing from this morning. Are we prepared to bring back in our jury at this time, State? Yes, sir. Defense? No, sir. Yes, sir. Make another motion. Judge, I've had a chance to read this transcript and I'd like to draw your attention to see a few pages. Which transcript are we referring to, sir? The October 4th, 2024 deposition of Dr. Tanya Warner. Okay. Yes, sir. I have it in front of me. May I sit? Yes, sir. I'm referring to page 38 at the very bottom, line 21. Answer I need to go through my notes and think about it and process it. But I had other depositions, as you're all aware, yesterday, so I had to prepare for those and go through that. So I had not had time to process through all of my notes prior to this deposition today. Page 39, line 2. Well, doctor, I'm not trying to inconvenience you. You know, the judge set for October 7th for jury selection. Line 5, she answered, okay. Question at 6, but I don't anticipate your testimony would be until later, you know. Maybe we could discontinue your deposition, and then reset it when you've got time to review. Because obviously, I'm not going to want to take your deposition, and then you have other opinions that are not going to be covered. Then at 13, Mr. J says, what is your position? Then at 14, Mr. J, conducting discovery after the jury trial starts is completely unacceptable to me, so that's my position. If she needs to issue a supplemental report, or if there comes a need for a second deposition, then we can address that, but it would be my position that we need to get this done because the state doesn't have any appellate rights once jury, the jury is sworn in jeopardy to patches. Line 23, Mr. Owens, well, you obviously understand my position. I'd like to finish the deposition today as well, but if she is holding out that she may have other opinions and other diagnoses after she has had more time to think, review the paperwork, then obviously that that creates an issue. The witness on line four, page 40. 
But if that happens, I can bring that forward and then you can add to your deposition at that point. If my opinions change after having reviewed further. Line eight, Mr. Owens. Mr. J? Line nine, Mr. J, I think you need to plow ahead. This is our time waiting with the court reporters prepared to give us a transcript by the end of the weekend. And if something needs to be amended, then she can A, issue a report. And then B, if you need to take a deposition, an abbreviated deposition on the limited subject matter she is not prepared to testify about to on today, then we can do that. But the notion of halting a deposition today that is set for three hours and then doing a three-hour deposition during trial, especially after jeopardy is attached, is not what the state would do. Line 23, page 40. Mr. Owens, I'm not suggesting that, Mr. J. I'm suggesting that we just said at the very beginning. I'm suggesting what you just said at the very beginning, which is let's finish. But if she has some supplement then I would want to take a brief second deposition as it relates to any new diagnoses or opinions. Then Mr. J goes, I think he gets confused about an issue relating to a diagnosis of an adjustment disorder or anxiety disorder. So we get down to the bottom of page 41, line 22, Mr. J. Okay, so on this topic, if something new comes up, then we can address it. But if we have other topics to depose her on, then I would suggest we go on. And then page 42, line one, Mr. Owens, I agree. I agree. And Dr. Werner, just let the state attorney know. I know that you may be, you know, we are short. We are on short time. If, if you do review your notes over the weekend or whatnot and formulate any other opinions, just let the state attorney know and we'll address it. Line seven, the witness, absolutely. That was our understanding. I've been ambushed by a new opinion that I was not made aware of by any kind of report. I was not notified by Dr. Warner. I was not notified by the state attorney, William J. I first heard about the opinion when she testified to it, and I objected to it. Relating to imminent threat, the ultimate issue of fact, I move for a total dismissal for prosecutorial misconduct. Denied. Denied! And here's the other reason it's denied. Page 38 of the deposition specifically that you made reference to starts at page 21, line 21. The question preceding that is important. Question 14. So the, from my understanding, when you just said was, yeah, I agree with general anxiety disorder that she had been diagnosed with. Answer. No, I said it would be generalized anxiety disorder versus adjustment disorder and that I hadn't had time to fully formulate that opinion out. This entire conversation pertains to those two issues, anxiety disorder and adjustment disorder. It has nothing to do with P PTSD, nothing to do with battered spouse. But Judge, we go on, and I see what she's doing, that she's saying, hey, I got jammed up. I had a deposition the other day. I didn't really have time between the, the evaluation and the deposition two days later. She had a deposition in between to really think about it, really review my notes. So as a catch-all, I said on page 40, if you have other op opinions or other diagnoses after she has more time to think and review the paperwork, then obviously that creates an issue. So, yes, that was initially what she was talking about specifically, but I realized what she was saying was she was going to have to reflect on a lot of these opinions. So I ex That's respectfully, sir, that's not what it says. That's specifically in line with the anxiety disorder versus adjustment disorder. That was the entire topic that was being conversed with. Now, later in the deposition, there are references, as I believe that I identified previously, on page 59, line 22. Question is asked, okay, and do you intend on expressing any other opinions other than what we've spoken about here today? Line 25, no. I will answer whatever questions I'm, moving to page 60, line one, asked. Question. Well, I'm asking now. I mean, you're the expert. I'm not. You're the one that's evaluated her. You're the one that's given her the test. I don't know the field like you do. You know the field. I understand you've said, hey, I want to think about this some more. I want to review my notes some more to see if, but in terms of right now, without any further reflection, Without any further answer, yes, sir, question, reading of the notes, any other opinions that you think 
you could express in any form or fashion with all this experience, almost a thousand jury trial or a thousand trials you've testified as an expert. Anything else that comes to mind that may be an opinion that you might express in Sarah Boone's case? Answer. Anything else that I'm asked with regard to her diagnosis come into play with regard to her case, I guess. Question. What other opinions do you believe you're qualified to express as it relates to Sarah Boone and the facts and circumstances relating to this case? Anything with regard to her diagnosis, I guess. 61. Of those four things we mentioned, line two, correct. And Judge, the four things were mentioned were related to the anxiety disorder, the narcissism, the battered spouse, the alcohol use disorder. Mm -hmm. Turning pages 58 and 59. But the overall thrust of that was any other opinions that were expressed. That was in good faith what, what we were doing. I would have, like I said before, I would have never taken her deposition. Once she said I hadn't finished my analysis and I may need additional information, just like she, he said the other day, Dr. Harper... If you get those additional medical records, Mr. Owens, uh, about George Torres and give them to Dr. Harper, then I'm going to want to take her deposition again. The same rules apply. Why would I take her deposition when she's, she hasn't finished? Because uh, her- the court ordered you to take her deposition because there were concerns about being able to have all of this done prior to trial. And you had concerns about what she was going to testify to. And the port- court set a scheduling order as to when, how, where, and the deadlines for those depositions to be conducted. That prosecutor should let me know if he was going to ambush me at trial. I should have known beforehand about a new opinion that Dr. Warner was going to express, especially related to battered spouse, post-traumatic stress, and whether or not it was an imminent threat at the time of this event. And the courts addressed that. Court does did exactly what was required by binding precedent by the Sixth District Court of Appeal and held a Richardson hearing, analyzed the three factors as required by Florida law with regard to those, and gave you the opportunity as a cure. And with regard to your request to strike or dismiss the case due to prosecutorial conduct, the case law by the Third District Court of Appeal filed April 10, 2024, State of Florida versus Denninghoff, D-E-N-N-I-N-G-H-O-F-F, and I can provide you a citation momentarily, states that dismissal is an extreme sanction to be used with caution and only when a lesser sanction wouldn't achieve the desired result. Specifically, dismissal of an information or indictment is an action of such magnitude that resort to such sanctions should only be had when no viable alternative exists. There were multiple viable alternatives, including but not limited to my request uh, an inquiry of whether or not you wanted that struck and the instruction to strike that opinion, in which you demurred and said, no, I want it for cross-examination. And I gave you the opportunity twice to depose her here in open court, which I oversaw with regard to any opinion that she had based on the proffer or any other opinion that she would be offering today. For those reasons, the court is not going to exercise its discretion and strike due to the extreme nature of striking a a criminal charge, and for the adequate remedy that has been provided to you. Is there anything else, sir, we need to address? May I supplement the record? Yes, sir. Judge, this deposition did not end on page 40 or 41 or 42. Mr. Owens took a direct examination of this deponent for 68 pages, and then it was turned over to myself for cross-examination during the deposition. Beginning on page 75, I asked the deponent, what did the defendant say about the murder? What she said on page 78 was that, starting at line 13, and she said there was a suitcase and some clothes that had gotten out to donate, and they were trying to get that together. It was on the floor in the living room. And that, as she was coming down the stairs, she saw him kind of slipping into the suitcase as a hiding place. As she said, I was, I saw him in the suitcase and I zipped him up and we were laughing. She said then he said he couldn't breathe. And I remembered feeling I couldn't breathe when he was choking me or sodomizing. And I was angry and I shook the suitcase. I lost control of the suitcase and it flipped. And she goes on and on about what happened. Defense counsel was there. He heard this testimony that there was no imminent danger presented at the time that she uh, began getting angry, shaking the suitcase, 
hitting with a bat, so on and so forth. And he didn't ask her that question after she had specifically instructed him, if you need an opinion of mine, you've got to ask me the question. It's unfair to experts to uh, be thrown with this catch-all provision of, please tell me in any opinion about this case that you may think is relevant. Well, what the doctor may think is relevant is different than perhaps what counsel thinks is relevant. Um, so it's it's really uh, an unfair criticism of the state uh, and probably more likely uh, self-reflective that this deposition, this opportunity to ask about this obvious issue did not occur. So that is what I would like to supplement the record with. Um, the deposition was substantially longer than page 41 or 42, where it's acting like it's concluding. And uh, you know, is there anything else? It, the state would just submit, I understand very well what my ethical duties are. I do not have any ethical duty to provide him an unrecorded statement that is not inconsistent with prior testimony. This doctor did not give me any unrecorded statements inconsistent with her testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Judge, I'd like to add on page 79 that she, Dr. Warner claims that Sarah said he put his two fingers out and I hit them with a bat. There was rule of completeness. But for him to say that that's not standard operating procedure when they're taking a deposition of an expert. Mr. Owens, I've ruled, sir. I understand. I understand your position. However, the questions that were specifically asked, which gave rise to this, specifically pertain to opinions of PTSD. I'm not going to rehash any and all of those things. The record speaks for itself. The court has ruled. Your motion for dismissal of the charges is denied. For the record, the citation that the court relied upon with regard to Denninghoff is located at 388 Southern 3rd, 10055, located at pinpoint 1057 Florida 4th. Third District Court of Appeal, April 10th, 2024. With that, are we ready to bring back in our panel? No, sir. Okay. Judge, I've got Earhart's Florida Evidence 2023 edition, volume one, Charles W. Earhart. I've already, I, I, let me tell you how you're going to rule on this, sir. I'm going to allow you, as I said up here at sidebar, to go into the facts that she relied upon and what it is that she utilized. I'm going to allow you, sir, as I said up here at the bench before the lunch hour, to go into those opinions that she didn't offer here today. And on rebuttal, Mr. J, I'm not going to allow you to stand up and say, may I have what ire? That wasn't one of your opinions today. You can address all of that and redirect. Is that clear? Very insane. Let me, let me just review to see if, because I had several. What you had inquired of me, Mr. Owens, up here was that you wanted to go into these other facts, medical records, text messages, statements. And you said, if I can't do it now because he's going to object, I'm going to call her and assert uh, rebuttal. And the problem, as the state pointed out, is that you can't use her as a conduit to admissible evidence on direct examination. And that if you want to do it, you got to do it now. And your argument was it goes to her bias, it goes to her credibility, and that you're permitted wide discretion on cross-examination. I agree with you. I agreed with you before the lunch hour. My ruling hasn't changed. I'm going to absolutely allow you to go into those things. I appreciate that, Judge. The other thing I wanted to readdress was, Judge, and I'm referring to uh, Earhart's treatise, Section 9.703, Opinion on the Ultimate Issue. I'm on page 933. Testimony in the form of an opinion or inference, otherwise admissible, is not objectionable because it includes an ultimate issue to be decided by the prior fact. And in that section, 703.1, it talks about that. <clears throat> opinion testimony is not inadmissible solely because it includes an ultimate issue to be decided by the trier of fact. The provision is equally applicable to expert and lay witnesses. The jury has the power to accept or reject the testimony of expert or lay witnesses, witnesses and is not bound by their conclusions. Merely because a witness expresses an opinion to an ultimate issue does not compel the jury to find that the facts to be true. The jury will be given the opinion. The jury will give the opinion as much weight as it feels the opinion deserves. Then it goes on, you know, the abolition of the rule against opinions on the ultimate issues does not mean that all other opinions are admissible. Witnesses have been prevented from expressing 
Their conclusions, when the opinion only tells the jury how to decide the case, witnesses will be prevented from expressing their conclusions when the opinion only tells the jury how to decide the case and does not help the jury to determine what occurred. For example, a witness cannot express his or her opinion as to the guilt or innocence of a criminal defendant. I'm on page 940. 703.1 still. When a witness is asked to express an opinion that applies a legal standard to a set of facts, which Dr. Warner did, the opinion testimony is generally inadmissible. The danger is that the witness will apply a standard or definition which is different from that defined by the applicable law. The application of erroneous legal standard results in the opinion testimony being misleading and not helpful to the jury. For example, an expert cannot opine whether a nursing home was negligent in its care of the decedent. It's exactly what we spoke about at counsel's table. I know, Judge, but if you go on, it says an expert may not be permitted that a truck driver drove his gross, drove in a grossly negligent manner, whether the sheriff's conduct was unconstitutional, whether certain waters are navigable, whether the defendant's action constituted misapplication or concealment of funds, or the legal obligations of the parties to a contract. Whether the testimony of the expert is a permissible, permissible factual conclusion or the impermissible application of a legal standard or definition to a set of facts is sometimes a fine distinction involving a large measure of discretion with a trial judge. For example, the admission of expert testimony that certain investments, it goes on. However, the witness expresses an opinion about the intent of the accused, the opinions, this, this is the important, one of the important sections. However, if the witness expresses an opinion about the intent of the accused, which Dr. Warner did, the opinion has not been permitted. The distinction drawn by the courts as to when this type of opinion testimony is admissible are often not clear. Section 90.703 does not permit a witness to testify to legal conclusions or express an opinion upon questions of substantive law. This expert testimony regarding substantive legal principles may not be helpful to the jury and may create confusion if an expert testifies in a manner that is different or even in conflict with the testimony of an opposing expert. But the citations, respectfully, counselor, and finish. respectfully, counselor, the citations that you're referring to are not at issue. Flewellen, error to permit a resting officer to testify that the quantity of cocaine possessed by appellant indicated that he possessed with intent to sell, which is the specific element of the charge in that case. Gamble, officer's expert testimony with the amount of drugs found in defendant's possession was inconsistent with personal use and therefore intended for sale was inadmissible. 644 Southern 2nd, 1376, by for Gamble and Flewellen, 703 Southern 2nd, 511. The, the Dinkin case that I read says this is acceptable. If a psychologist or psychiatrist can text, testify that someone is not mentally defective or was mentally defective, that's on all fours with based on what the defendant had said to this expert. She was not in imminent fear. Now, I don't remember exactly what was said, but it was along those lines. Based as looking all those things, the totality of the circumstances of what, in my evaluation, on or about October 2, that the defendant had said to me as the expert, it's not imminent fear. That object, that opinion is not inadmissible. Per the case law under Dinkins. Can I read a little bit more? It, it if you're just going to be reading from the treatise, I've already read it. Okay, well, I just want to, I just want to make mention because it's talking about does not prevent a witness to testify about legal conclusions or express opinions on questions of substantive law. And I was about, about to finish this text, this, this section when the testimony, the testimony, this testimony, and I'm on page 947. This testimony may also interfere with the function of the trial judge to determine the applicable law and to instruct the jury thereon. As we know, we're going to do battle over the jury instruction on justifiable use of deadly and non-deadly force. The testimony from Dr. Warner, and I wrote it down, she said based on what Doc, uh, Sarah Boone told her, she was not facing imminent risk of harm. That invades the province and function of the trial judge to determine the applicable law and to instruct the jury otherwise, which we haven't even done yet. You haven't made findings of law about which instructions apply. That's what she did, Judge. Your objection's been made for the record, and the court previously ruled on this matter. 
I appreciate the additional argument, but the court's reliance on Dinkins remains. Just because 9703 speaks for itself. So your objection is overruled as to that issue. Anything else we need to address, Mr. Owens, before we bring back in our panel? No, sir. State? Nothing. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Let's bring back in our panel. Thank you. All could be seated. Members of the jury, welcome back. Mr. Owens, you may continue your cross-examination, sir. Dr. Warner, I don't want to rehash it, but just for the jury's sake, would it be fair to say that the text messages that you were forwarded by the state attorney you, by the state attorney for you to review, you did not deem to be relevant to your evaluation? Right. They, uh, they um, demonstrate. Ma'am, it's a yes or no question. Yes. Now, from what I understand, uh, when the state attorney sent you the information, they, they did not send you any videotapes. Correct. So you have not reviewed any videotapes in this matter. Correct. The, the suitcase videotapes, either one of those, you have not reviewed. I have not seen them. Okay. Or any body cam videotapes you have not reviewed. They're described in the uh, police report. My question is, have you viewed any of the body cam videotapes relating to this incident? I have not seen them. Correct. Prior incidences between the two of them, have you reviewed any videotapes, body cam videotapes of any prior incidents? I have not. Have you reviewed the audio tapes related to some of the questions, mm -hmm. Sarah Boone? I have not. Have you reviewed the autopsy report? Uh, it's described in the incident report, but I did not see the actual autopsy. Now, you're aware that uh, we have called two, uh, two experts, Dr. Uh, Michael Brannon and Dr. Julie Harper. Is that correct? Yes. And you're aware that... They are forensic psychologists. That's correct. And you are a forensic psychiatrist. That's correct. So they didn't go to medical school and you did. That's correct. And they don't understand medical issues, so to speak. I, I don't have an understanding of what they understand in medical. Do you recall telling me? That they don't understand medical issues, so to speak? They haven't been to medical school, but I wouldn't understand their medical knowledge. If you would look on page 22 of your deposition. Objection collateral. Approach. Objection's overruled. Dr. Warner, have you had a chance to review your deposition on page 22, starting at line 7? Yes. Could you read down through line 11 your answer? Yes, I'm talking about psychologists in general, not with regard specifically to your experts, which is what you were just asking me about. Okay, but you would agree. Your opinion is psychologists typically do therapy, but they don't prescribe medication or understand medical issues, so to speak. Correct. Overall. I wasn't specifically talking about your experts, which you were asking me about your experts. Specifically, okay. and, I, and I said I didn't understand. I didn't know what their specific medical. Right. That's what you said under oath, October fourth of this year. Sustained. Now, is it fair to say that the majority of your work is in the field of competency to proceed and guardianship evaluations? Actually, the majority of my work is in patient care. I work seven days a week um, on the crisis stabilization unit, actually treating patients. You work seven days a week, sir. So, as a for forensic psychiatrist doing forensic work, the majority of your work in that area is in the field of competency to proceed and guardianship evaluations. As a forensic psychiatrist, correct. As a psychiatrist, I work seven days a week um, on the crisis stabilization unit. And where is that unit? It's in, uh, located in Lake City, Florida. So, you work there seven days a week? Yes, sir. And then on, you also do this forensic psychiatrist work doing competencies to proceed and guardianship evaluations. That's part of uh, the um, what comes under the umbrella of my forensic work, yes. That's the majority of your forensic work? Yes, that's the majority. Of the, the, that's the most common cases that, that we're asked to, to. And then next in line would be sanity at the time of the crime. Yes. So you would make a determination and submit a report to the court as to whether or not a defendant, an accused, is legally sane or not at the time of the offense. Yes, that's correct. Is it fair to say that you also testify weekly 
as a treating physician through Baker Act Court. Yes, that's correct. Uh, every Thursday, um, we have Baker Act hearings uh, with regards to our individuals who are being held in our crisis stabilization unit. Um, is that in Gainesville or Lake City? Now, Lake City from here is north, uh, north of Gainesville? Yes, sir. It's approximately 40 minutes north of Gainesville. No. Now, I believe you said you've testified in battering spouse situations in court approximately five to ten times? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. And you often refer to that as intimate violence cases? Yeah. Now, my understanding that after you had a chance to evaluate my client, Sarah Boone, and I believe you evaluated her two days before the deposition, so it would have been uh, October the 2nd of 2024? As to your diagnosis as it relates to her, do you believe that she suffers from a generalized anxiety disorder? No, sir. Now, you're aware that she was previously diagnosed prior to, prior to you evaluating her. She was previously diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder. She uh, told me that she had previously been diagnosed. I did not see any medical records um, with that diagnosis in it, but she uh, told me that she had previously been diagnosed with that. Did you attempt to secure any other records to us? Proper. Sustained. Did you diagnose her with an adjustment disorder? I did diagnose her with an adjustment disorder. Do you believe that if she was diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder, it's really not that it should be an adjustment disorder? Um, a lot of the symptoms overlap for the two diagnoses. Um, and we see that quite often that the different diagnosticians or, or um, physicians come up with different diagnoses um, based on a conglomerate of symptoms. So it's not uncommon for, for the two diagnoses to, to overlap based on the symptoms. Do you agree back on October the 4th, 2024, when I took your deposition, that you could not make up your mind at that time whether she suffered from generalized anxiety disorder or an adjustment disorder? I had not made a, a clinical decision at that time. I hadn't reviewed um, all of my documents at that time. When did you make a clinical decision that she suffered from adjustment disorder as opposed to generalized anxiety disorder? Um, it was probably within the, the next week when I was reviewing all of the, uh, going through all of the uh, documents in her, uh, her interview more thoroughly. Dr. Warner, did you, you agree you did not notify me? Judge, may we approach? Yes. Objection is sustained. Dr. Warner, you, you agree that when, when I took your deposition on October the 4th, uh, you had questions in all honesty about whether or not you felt like she, Sarah Boone suffered from a generalized anxiety disorder versus an adjustment disorder. Um, I was leaning towards adjustment disorder secondary to her being in the correctional uh, setting, and I think I said that in my deposition. Um, I didn't know that I had enough um, information um, from her because I only had information from her. I didn't have anything in the medical records to support a uh, generalized anxiety disorder. So and I it, want to review that. I'm just learning it now as you Good. testified here today. Sustained. Are you, is this the first time you've let the parties know that this is your opinion? That, that I believe that she has generalized anxiety disorder? No. Or that I believe that she has um, adjustment disorder. Now, from your evaluation, you determined that she had a per personality trait. That's correct. And you, you felt like that she had a grandiosity issue? Yes, she has a narcissistic personality. A trait, one trait. Do you agree a lot of people have one trait? Yes. Okay. A lot of people have a grandiosity trait that, that are not narcissists. I never said that she's a narcissist. Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone has alcohol use disorder? Yes, that's correct. And are you forming that opinion based on Sarah Boone's admission to you that she was an alcoholic? Let me refer to my notes. She has a history of being diagnosed with that. She also acknowledged to me that her use had been problematic. So you formed the opinion that she suffered from alcohol use disorder based on the history that she presented to you at this uh, evaluation? It was based on the totality of the information that I was provided. So the medical records demonstrating that she had been diagnosed with it in the past. Her um, ex-husband um, 
in the um, in his interview in the police report described her as an alcoholic. Um, and in her description of herself having a problem with alcohol. Do you acquire a tolerance over time if you drink on the regular? That's one of the criteria. Do people also have a genetic tolerance for alcohol? They may. You know, as it relates to uh, battered spouse syndrome, um, would you agree that uh, that is a recognized syndrome in the psychiatric community? Yes. And you have heard no criticisms of that syndrome? No. And you would agree that's a subset of post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes. <laughs> and you would agree that Lenora Walker first developed the theory of post-traumatic stress syndrome? Now, I think at the time of this deposition, you were not sure you knew Lenore Walker. All right, look at page 54. Objection is sustained. But what you recognize Lenore E. A. Walker's book, The Battered Woman Syndrome, as an authoritative treatise on battered spouse syndrome? Um, I do not because I have not read everything. I haven't read it. And so I can't say that I agree with everything in it. Is it clear to you that Sarah Boone was involved in a violent relationship with George Torres? Yes. Do you agree that there was a violent cycle that occurred during that three and a half year relationship that Sarah Boone had with George Torres? It's been described that way, yes. Would you describe it that way? Um, it's been described that way to me, yes. Do you have an opinion? Do you have an opinion? Okay. Sustained. Do you have an opinion that that was a violent cycle between Sarah Boone and George Torres? It's been described in a way, yes. Do you agree that George Torres was the abuser and Sarah Boone was the victim in that? Um, it's been, it was a volatile relationship. In the police report, her ex-husband actually describes her as being the aggressor. Okay, well, I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. It's been identified as this is good by. Have you ever seen this photograph? I have not. You see the injuries on Sarah Beck? I do. You see this photograph? I do. Have you ever seen it before? I have not. You agree that's Sarah Beck? I do. Are you aware that George Torres... Sustained. Have you ever seen this photograph? I have not. Did you ever read anything about George Torres using a curtain rod <coughs> as a weapon against Sarah Beck? I don't recall that specifically. Have you ever seen this photograph? No. Have you ever seen this photograph? No. Have you ever seen this photograph? No. Have you ever seen the videotape relating to this photograph? No. Have you ever seen this photograph? No. Now, I believe at the time of the deposition, that you had spent two of it, I think on October the 2nd of 2024, you had spent two and a half hours evaluating Sarah Boone, and about half of that time was giving her a test. The mental status examination takes approximately five minutes. Okay. Uh, did you go through her entire history of abuse over the three and a half year period within the two hours and 20 minutes that you had? No. Now, I understand that you, you indicated you may take a couple more hours to go through your file and your notes and to come up with your conclusions. Did you do that? Yes. Have you spent any more time on the case other than that two hours? Um, I re-reviewed um, the documents. Have you made any other attempts to go see Sarah Boone anymore? Yeah. Proper. Sustained. You agree that your opinions are subjective, not based on authority? Um, they're based on my uh, education, training, and, and years of experience. And you would agree they're, they're your subjective opinions? Correct. Would you agree that Sarah Boone suffers from battered spouse syndrome? I do. Would you agree that battered women's experiences affect their perception of imminent danger? They can. Would you agree that victims of repeat violence may fear death in a situation others would not? They may. Because someone suffers from battered spouse syndrome, they have a heightened sensitivity to danger. They may. You agree that people suffering from depression and anxiety are predisposed to getting into a relationship with a partner who may be violent? They may. Each individual is, is different. Are they more susceptible <laughs> to getting in a relationship if they suffer from depression and anxiety with a violent, intimate partner? They may be. Do you agree 
that the DSM, I think you have it there with you? Yes, sir. Directs that, that the clinician should consider post-traumatic stress disorder if there was exposure to extreme stress. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Did you do any testing to measure whether or not Sarah Boone had post-traumatic stress disorder? No. Is it your opinion that Sarah Boone suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder? Again, I, she did not give me enough information to formulate an opinion with regards to that. You agree that an intimate partner, partner who commits acts of violence, physical violence against um, the victim, that that could cause extreme stress in that individual? To me. You agree if that that is the cause, the violence is the cause of extreme stress, that a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder should be considered? If they meet the criteria. They have to meet the diagnostic criteria. Do you agree that... There is a, a sense of learned helplessness when someone suffers from battered spouse syndrome. Yes, that's part of the syndrome. Do you agree that these women, these battered women, have learned the probability of receiving a beating and they recognize specific predictive cues emitting from the batterers? Yes, but it's not just women. I understand, but you would agree the vast majority of intimate partner violence, battered spouse syndrome victims are women. Yeah, intimate partner violence, yeah. Excuse me? Intimate partner violence, yeah. The vast majority, the lion's share, are women. Yeah. And these battered women have learned the probability of receiving a beating by recognizing specific predictive cues emitted by the batterers. Correct. And many times, these predictive cues result in a high level of anxiety. Yeah. And in that situation, the battered women may attempt to reduce through several different means, one of which is to avoid delaying the beating. Yes, we talked about that with the cycle. What is a basal instinct? A basal instinct? I have no idea. Primal, primal fear? Primal fear is just being afraid. Is that, is that a natural instinct that animals have? Yeah. Fight or flight instinct? Yeah. You don't even think about it. Correct. Do you agree that victims of battered spouse or battered woman syndrome suffer from self-isolation, suicidal thoughts, and oftentimes substance abuse? They may. Each one, each individual is different, so they and, may. And they may show signs of physical injury and illness, such as bruising and chronic fatigue. <clears throat> The syndrome, battered woman syndrome, is the psychological effects of living with an intimate partner violence. Yes. <laughs> they may have intrusive memories. They may. Or they re-experience past traumatic events in their mind. Yes. They have high levels of anxiety. Yes. Hypervigilant when, when something doesn't seem right. They may. It leads to this fight or flight response that we spoke about. Yes. They have problems with sleep. They may. They often go into denial. They may. Minimizing what is happening to them. They may. Numbing their emotions. Disassociation. A battered woman may often develop a defense mechanism of being able to psychologically detach from their body during the traumatic experience. That's not good. Sustained. Panic attacks, severe depression, very low self esteem, poor body image, disassociation, learned helplessness. All these are symptoms of a battered woman syndrome. Sustained. You agree panic attacks is one of the symptoms of battered woman syndrome. Sustained. What are the symptoms of a battered spouse syndrome? Um, they can be um, numerous symptoms um, from anxiety um, symptoms, mood symptoms, um, they can have psychotic symptoms, mm. any vast majority of symptoms, substance abuse symptoms, um, any vast majority. Do you agree fear is a symptom? Somebody in a constant state of fear? Maybe, yeah. In terms of the abusive partner, do you agree that they would hit the victim? Some of them, yes. Kick the victim? They may. Punch to kick the victim? Choke, choke, burn, destroy their belongings, use weapons to hurt them, 
Threaten to hurt them, their children, or their pets. Take their car keys. Take their debit card. Take their vehicle. Control where they go and who they see. Force them to have sex when they don't want to. You really got to hand it to him. He's done an excellent job of making the psychiatrist look like a complete moron. But neither of the psychologists he called in had any contact with Sarah or the victim. They were only here to describe battered spouse syndrome, and that's it. And it was just so that he could overlay that idea on top of Sarah Boone's testimony, which was probably just a pile of lies. But at the end of the day, this psychiatrist is admitting that she thinks Sarah suffers from battered spouse syndrome. Shouldn't that be enough for his case? I just don't understand what he's so upset about. He could have asked her the appropriate questions at the time of the deposition, but he didn't. It's not her responsibility to make sure he asked the appropriate questions. I just think day five is the day that this guy realized he lost this case. And now he's just looking for someone to blame. I know you spent a short amount of time with her and, and you're saying you didn't get some of the answers as to whether or not. Objection sustained. If, if you'd have spent more time with Sarah Boone, could you have uncovered as to whether or not she suffered from battered spouse syndrome? I agree that she met the criteria or that she had better spouse. About post traumatic stress disorder. Uh -huh. It's possible. Thank you. Any redirect examination? Yes. You may proceed. In your uh, decades of experience, have you ever treated patients uh, that suffer from trauma disorders? Yes. How frequently would you say you do that? I have patients on the unit right now uh, that I'm treating on a regular daily basis. <laughs> How about patients that meet the criteria for battered spouse syndrome? How many would you say over the course of your career? Probably five to six a month on, on my inpatient units. And that's a lot of months. How long have you been doing this? Since 1998, uh, when I began my career at the University of Florida. I'm talking to you. Now, on cross-examination, you were asked uh, about some diagnosis. Correct? Yes. All right. Any of these things that you talked about, uh, narcissistic personality disorder, adjustment disorder, anxiety, battered spouse syndrome, any stress or trauma related disorder. If the state uh, wanted to ask you those opinions, would you have been receptive to more materials before making any opinions about those topics? Yes. And is it your testimony today that you don't have enough um, information to necessarily make a complete and proper diagnosis on any of those things since you have not been provided those materials? Correct. Now, you testified that she does meet the criteria for battered spouse syndrome. Yes. But you would be receptive to any evidence uh, that you were provided, right? Correct. Right. Going back to what you testified to on direct when the state asked you your opinion about this case, everything that you just talked about with Mr. Owens, does that change your opinion uh, about whether or not battered spouse syndrome is applicable to the facts as Ms. Boone relayed them to you about this incident? No, not at all. And why is that? Because again, she needs Objection, judge. Objections overruled. Based on your conversation, Mr. Owens, you've indicated that your opinion did not change, and now would you answer why? Yes. So, with uh, my interview with her, the way that she described the incident um, to me, and that they were laughing and having a good time, um, it didn't play into um, really any kind of triggers or, or any kind of point. Does this photograph inform you as to what happened? No. Does it inform you as to who was the aggressor? No. H for identification. Same questions. Does it inform you as to what happened? No. Does it inform you as to who the aggressor was? No. Same questions for G. No. F. No. E. No. B. No. And A. No. If those specifics as to what happened and who was the aggressor is dependent upon the credibility of somebody. Um, would you want to take into account all the things that can make a person credible or less than credible? Yes, you would want to take that into account. And you talked about mm -hmm. alcohol um, use disorder, 
would you take that into account if somebody uh, is under the influence of alcohol or been consuming alcohol when they relay a history as to things that happened? Objections overruled. You were asked about whether or not you did any testing uh, for post-traumatic stress disorder. Correct. And you didn't. Um, you already indicated, however, you believe that Ms. Boone meets the criteria for battered spouse syndrome. Again, that doesn't change your opinion that you gave when talking with me on direct examination. Objects. It's been answered. Overruled. Specifically about this question about the testing that you did not perform. Did this lack of testing um, have any ch change or effect on your opinion as to whether or not battered spouse syndrome applied to the facts of this case? No. You were you were questioned about insanity on cross examination. You recall that? Yes. Would you agree that simply because somebody is mentally ill and meets the criteria for diagnosis such as schizophrenia, bipolar, any of those psychotic or mood disorders, that doesn't necessarily make a person legally insane? Correct. The two are equal. Likewise, even if somebody meets the criteria for battered spouse syndrome, does that mean every action they take against their intimate partner is justified? Correct. So even if you do have battered spouse syndrome, even if you are in an intimately violent relationship, <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily mean any action you take against your partner is, is justified. That's correct. No other questions? State, can this witness be released? Yes, sir. Defense. We got the phone number to reach out. Okay. All right, ma'am, you're released, potentially subject to recall. Thank you. for a year and a half and he's going through a whole bunch of shit. Pardon me for saying that. No, no, no. Go ahead and... uh, pardon me for saying that. But like, oh man. Uh, he let loose on my ass tonight and I did not. I'm not having it. Okay. All right. I got kicked in the face. Okay. Kicked in the face. That you know of there's no guns no, or anything in there? Okay. No, We just have to double check. Yeah. I know, baby. You guys are doing your job. All right. No. Sarah here? Yes. Sarah here? Go get him. But I swear to God, there's nothing for you guys to be afraid of. Okay. What's his name? George. George, all right. There's nothing for you guys to be afraid of. I swear to God, I'm done with the bad too. I'm. He beat the fuck out of me tonight, and I'm done with it. Are you wrong? I have to go to work mm -hmm. tomorrow. What's up, George? You want to talk to us? Go outside. Talk to you inside. Come on, man. You see my eye. I do see your eye. Okay, tell me how it all went down from beginning to. Yes, my love. Okay. Okay, so. We were having a really good day and we mm -hmm. went across the street to Muldoon's mm -hmm. and everything was good and fine and dandy. And if I talked to another guy because he left, Came in there and I got so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad, so mad. Because I asked for a cigarette from another guy because he took my license, my debit card, mm -hmm. and everything. Cigarettes, everything. Took everything. Took everything. Okay. So I asked, asked someone for a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be a guy. So he walked in and got super pissed because I asked for a cigarette from another guy. I came home. Mind you, my car is across the street still. Okay. Fuck. Oh, 
while. So you get home. Oh, go inside. Oh, man. Let loose. Mm-mm. Okay. Elaborate. So you open the door. What happens from there? I'm a whore. He starts calling your names? Okay. When I say ragdoll, do you know what that is? I don't know what a ragdoll is. Oh, man. I was ragdolled. Okay. But I need, and I need you... And the face. Okay. I need you to elaborate. Like, you walk into the house. Did you start arguing? He started calling you names. You said he was... No. Calling. I I walked out. I walked in and I walked to the back. I just wanted to smoke a cigarette and just go to sleep. I just literally wanted to just... I'm going to smoke a cigarette. I'm going to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as you're making your way to the back, what happened? I got caught on the stairwell. You got caught on the stairwell. So he caught you on the stairwell. And what Did he get in front of you? Started confronting you, telling you anything? What happened? Um, it was bad. Okay. Elaborate, Miss Sarah. I need you to tell me exactly what happened so I can help you. My heart is like... I don't want him to get in trouble, but fuck, I'm tired of being beaten up. Okay. I understand I'm trying to help you out, but I, I know need you to, are. I know you are. I need you to elaborate a little bit. So, I swear in the God, stairwell? Drag me down the stairs. Drag me. I went upstairs, mm-hmm. tried to get in the bed. I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. I didn't make it to the bed. I didn't make it to the bed. He caught me in the upstairs. Like in the hallway? Beating the fuck up. That's all I can say. Okay, what do you mean? Like, I see your eye. What You said yes, he kicked you in the eye. That's what it's saying. That's what it's saying. Were you on the floor when he kicked you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, how did you get to the floor? <laughs> did he push you? Did he pull you? How? Normally, what I do is, because he does it so often, I just go to the floor. I just go to the floor. So, I'm pretty sure I don't really recollect. I went to the ground. I went to the ground. Okay. And then that's when he... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, no. That's fine. I don't mind. So, you went down to the ground. Yes, that's what I do. Did he... He kicked you with which... Do you recall which foot? Right. Right foot. Okay. Heel. His heel. Okay. And you say you've been together um, for... Whore. Because I asked for a cigarette. Because he left my ass in my car across the street. Okay. And you said you've been together for about a year? And a half. A year and a half. Yes. Okay. Live together, obviously. Yes. Okay. All I right. just recently went through a divorce. He's mm-hmm. been there with me. He knows all the story. Blah, blah, blah. But... <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to... This it's, sucks. And I have to go to work tomorrow. Do you want the fire department to come out and check no, your eyes? No, Okay. Okay. And do I, you want to press charges? You can smoke your cigarette if you want. Well, can I talk to you, though? You're talking to me by myself. I don't want him to be taken. Please put the fear of the police in charge. So you don't want to press charges? Okay. Do you want to fill out any paperwork? Do a statement? No? Okay. Smoke your cigarette? Sit down, smoke your cigarette. I don't want him to get in trouble. Okay. What? I know. You guys have actually been out here twice now. Mm-hmm. Look at your shit. You fucking ripped my shit all the time. Did this happen today? Yes! Okay. Alright. Yeah, I see it. It's ripped and I'm down there a little bit. I just bought this yesterday. I get it. Sit down. Smoke your cigarette. Do you think? No, no, no. It's fine. Do you have an ID with you? Is it in the house? Okay. We'll go find it I know my number if you want it. No, that's perfect. Go for it. 500-777-8-0-0. Okay. First name is spelled S-A-R-A-H. Do you have a middle name? Catherine. K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. R-Y-N. What's your last name? Burns. 
B-O-O-M-E. I see it at birth. 10, 10, 7, 7. I get it. I get it. Make sure not to squeeze my arm anymore. Do you have a telephone number? 4 Email address? Uh, SKP. SKP. Underscore. underscore. 1-800. 1 800. 1 800. At at uh, yahoo.com. Sorry. No, that's cool. That's cool. I, I, I get it. I get it. Sit down, smoke your cigarette, try to relax a little bit. I'm going to take pictures of you in a little bit. All right. Thank you. No problem. Side. Am I going to spend the whole night over there? Uh, when it comes to have a seat, we'll talk. When it comes to domestic related stuff, man, yeah. um, you'll, you'll probably sit in there for a day. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to lie to you. All right. You're going to probably sit in there for a day, maybe two. All right. What well, might possibly? It's all up to the judge. All right. This is the thing is that the reason why they do that, man, is because when it's domestic related, all right, y'all are dating. This is still dating violence, still domestic violence. Yeah. Okay. They got to make sure they keep y'all separated long enough to where nobody's gonna come home and kill each other. And, you know, I, I know that, that might not be that might not be your intention. That's the majority of the, the majority of the uh, domestic violence and dating violence uh, battery calls that we deal with. That's that never happens. But there's always that one out of many that will do. It. So that's why they're going to, you'll probably sit in jail for maybe a day or two. Okay? All right. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Just keep being cooperative, all right? Yes, sir. All right. So you want your phone? You want your phone? Yes. Make sure, you, make sure you guys lock the back door, okay? We, we got you. Don't worry. We'll, we'll take care of that. You, you go by Junior, you go by George? Uh, George. Is it George or is it Jorge? Jorge. Jorge. All right. George. Hey, hey, man, I'll call you by your name. Well, you, want, you want George? Okay, I'll call you George. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Hey, Mr. Sarah, you mind putting down the, the cigarette so I can take in a few other pictures? You made me? Yeah, yeah, just stand up for me. Face my car that way. The car is that way. Hands behind your back. For what? For battery domestic? Me? Both of you. What does that mean? Battery domestic violence? You two hitting each other. Um, Doesn't go down like that. Alright? Walk towards that car. County 125. I have a white female secured. You don't have anything that's going to poke me, stick me, cut no. me. Okay. Put your chest on that flag and stay there for me. This is for real? This is for real. Why? I already explained you. Chest on flag. I should probably not be together, but that's not my business. Yes, so, stuff like this happens, and I have to step in. Why am I in trouble? Spread though? your feet. Spread your feet apart. Why am I in trouble though? Because of Why the marks he has all on his neck and the inconsistencies that's of the me story. Back. Okay. I can't. Okay, step back a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. I still gotta check you though. Why? Because I fucking thought that? No, because everybody that goes in my car gets checked. No matter no, who no, you no, are. No, 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 no. I mean, like, seriously, like, I literally just started my job a week ago. Okay. Go ahead and sit down for me. Sarah? I am literally just started my job a week ago. Phone. Her phone's over there? It's in your front seat. Okay. Thank you. Turning now to folder OCSO 19-054. Within this folder, the first thing that will be published is a file that's an audio mm -hmm. file. 911 call underscore R1. one Four seven four eight Grant Court, apartment three. Four seven four. Four seven four eight. What was the the name I did here? Four seven four eight Grant Court, apartment three. Okay. Okay. Nothing better recall, but I did. You can beat the fuck out of me. You said Grant Blake. That's what it comes up, as always. Okay, and then what, what, what was the apartment? Three. Okay, and what happened then? He just beat the fuck out of me. Who is he? George Torres. Is he still there? Yes. Okay, where's he at? Up in the bed. I'm outside. Okay. I did not like that. Or okay. Anything. Do you need any? Do you need any medical attention? No. Okay. I just have a lump on my head, and I got these bugs up. That's all. Okay. What's your name? Sarah. Yeah. With an H. Okay. And George, you black on your head? He's Hispanic. What did you wear today? Oh gosh. Just tell the shirt to That's all I mean. I don't even recognize because you just showed up. Okay. Do you have the same Um, February 13th, 78. 2, 13th, And I swear, it's I'm just going to say because he's not on the lead and he's not supposed to be here. But he's here. How, how long ago did this happen? Um, a video labeled 19-054-917 underscore BAT underscore DV.
说呢？说呢？
Okay, so you keep getting upset with me, but you're not really giving me the information that I need. I'm asking you to kind of walk me through what happened, okay, because I don't know, I wasn't there. I know. Okay? Yes. Okay, so I'll just have you guys were upstairs. <laughs> Alright, but that means lots of different things. So that's why I need to know what this you did. The reason why I have all of this over here is because he continuously stops me and he took eight strangled me multiple times. Today? Yes. Okay. Did, he, did you start to lose consciousness or anything while you were strangling you? I couldn't breathe. Did you feel yourself losing consciousness? Oh, no, I didn't lose consciousness. I just couldn't breathe. Okay. But how long was he strangling for? Tell him I got him off of me. Okay. Come on. Can I tell you something before you call and whatever? Mm hmm. I've been arrested before because I fought back. What's going on, man? Come on here, talk. What's going on? Talk to me. What's going on today? Can you speak English? Yes. Okay, tell me what's going on. 
why are you here right now? Because she called me. So tell me, you want to tell me what's going on? This is where you come. Yeah. Where are these cuts on your neck? That's me. Okay. And I work right there at 
Okay, so you came over here today, you said, for about a while ago, an hour or two. Uh, what have you been doing since you've been here? Okay, so just spend time with her, and then all of a sudden she decided to run a sign calling out. Why would she do that? You don't know? She's nice, dude. She's nice. No! Okay. That's fine. But... But what you gotta understand what you're telling me isn't really adding up. Because she gave me her side story. What did she say? She's saying that's your head. That's all I mean. It's because it's your head. Ma'am! I'm doing my job, okay? You just sit there and be quiet. I'll be over to talk to you when I can. Every time you start yelling, you're interfering. She's the one that she just out of nowhere. <coughs> She's mad because <coughs> she took me out of the of the of the lease. She took me out of the lease. And I told these guys of the lease, like, I can't cash my check. I can't cash my check. What about her? So, please talk to her. Okay, so you can already talk to her about cashing your check? Yes. Okay, yeah, you've been here for a couple of hours. Okay, so what happened to make her run outside and call police? Because I'm seeing cuts on you and I'm seeing bumpers on her. But you're not telling me what happened. And you're the one sitting in the back of a cop car right now. I don't even know what happened. Did she hit you? All the time. Who hit who first? She does all the time. So she hit you first? All the time. Look, today. I'm talking about today. You don't know if she hit you today? Huh? Do you have an idea on it? Um, she has it. She has it? Yeah. Okay. Can you grab his ID for me? No. I don't have it. He said it's in the house. No. I have to live in the bushes. Where in the bushes? Because I need it. Frank, love, whatever, however. Oh my gosh, the front door is open and I don't even know where my dog's at. Oh. Yeah, find the desk. I don't have this idea. You said you threw in the bushes. Where in the bushes did you throw it? Could you please go look over there? So what's happening? It's in the back of the car. You said he hit you. He beat you. You have a bomb. Okay. I don't have it. You can look up here. Okay. Publishing portions of 19-054, pardon, 054917 underscore BAT underscore DV hyphen 2. For the record, it is about 47 minutes, 20 seconds long. State will publish 000 to 2 minutes and 19 minutes to 22 minutes. And all evidence will go back to the jury with a, a scrub computer. Ranting mother came over here, so it should be somewhere in here. They didn't find it. I don't have it. No, I don't need it because it makes getting his information a lot easier if I don't have to keep asking him questions and I can just get it out there. I'm not making more than I could, friends. I'm not. I already looked through here. Okay. I already get the stuff out over there. I'll get her spot on the list. You know what I'm saying? Fuck! She also has my brush. 
certificate. What the? Listen, she said, okay, she threw in the bushes. I'm trying to find it. If you look in here, you won't be needing it. She told me I'm not going to get one. I love you. I don't know what it is when I'm, you asked me for it. Okay, maybe he didn't get to it yet. That's not how I can see it. Oh, yeah. It was the back side of this. Uh, if you get any more bruises that show up that you didn't see while we were here. Can or... I show you all the other pictures that I have that I have documented? Oh, um, he's going to jail for this, so the rest of that I can't leave anything about. But if anything else shows up, you can go take that paper down to headquarters. It's not going to be anything else because you're taking him down. Put I mean, him under the jail. He's going. Under the jail. Okay. We're all set then. What else do you, I could show you bloody fingers and bloody faces and black eyes and... I know, it sounds like you guys need to probably not hang out with each other anymore. Hello. I know. I know, That's why I left but, but, him three weeks ago. But this also isn't the first time, so... With both you guys, with the cops out here. No. Okay. I've had to lie to you guys three times. And you shouldn't have to do that, so let's make this maybe the last time. Now I don't, I'm not lying. <laughs> and I appreciate that. Okay, and he's gone. Okay? They're gonna come and kill me. Who's that? Just like I told the other sheriff, mm -hmm. they're gonna come and kill me. Okay. If you I want you to know that. Look. If you're in fear, are you talking about yes. the family? Yes. Okay. So I you, want you to know, I am full blown. They're gonna come and kill me. Go down to the courthouse. Okay, and get an injunction against them. Did you, get the, did you get the pamphlet for the victim's rights yes. pamphlet? Okay, so you know that there's a place where you can They're go tonight? They're going to come and tell me. Okay, so you got the victim's rights pamphlet. Do you know there's a place you can go tonight then? It's in the bed. I'm going to go sleep over the house. Perfect. Neighbors. Okay. Do you have any more questions? Can I get you on? This one. Um, well, I'm working. I get in trouble for that. Okay. Have a good day. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, I know. Uh, thank you. Okay. I love it. That's this one. Okay. Have a good day, man. Like, and whatever the fuck he says, I'm telling him a dick. Hey. Uh, this is Austin. Austin, have a good day. Uh, thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Oh. Publishing video file axon underscore flex underscore two underscore video. It's the only one that starts with that name in this whole thing. So, why don't you come on over and give me a written statement about what happened? Where did you I have it over here by my car. Sure, just stay right there. I'm getting a statement from you. You're not being arrested. 
So okay, good. Right. I'll come over and see you on my side. Come on. Thanks, buddy. Say no. Let's get this done. Say no. Okay. Good. Now, would you come in here so we can do your statement, please? And stop this. Sit down at the table and let's get your statement filled out. He didn't believe I would ever do it. I'm going to show the floor, is that okay? Sure. Did you have No, you're not getting arrested. I've already told you that. Yeah. Uh, Is this on the couch? Uh, Is this on the couch? No, ma'am. I just need your ID. Okay, look. I can write back on the couch. I will give you the statement to write. I need your ID. I don't need to sit on the couch to fill this out. You can. I sit down all day, but I appreciate the offer. Yes, it's comfy. I'm just coming outside. Thank you, God. He's gone. Oh, man. Oh, man. They're going to come up here and try to kill me. I don't know that. They're going to come up here and try to kill me. Who's that? His uh, brothers and his mother and his father. They're going to come up here and try to kill me. Don't open the door for them. It doesn't matter. They drop off there and it's rant and it's bullshit and everything and then they cause too much and then, then I get complaints against me. Um, anyway, my name is Sarah. Mm-hmm. Hi, Sarah. I'm Phil Savage. What's your name? Jeff. Deputy Brown. Jeff. Yeah. Okay. We're all going to be my name and I'm did he get caught off? He will be. Do you have a phone number, ma'am? 407 716 I'm not getting arrested. Nope. You're not. Did you do something you should be arrested for? No. Okay. For the last time I called back. For 20 years. Do you have an email address, ma'am? S U S K and K P S and Paul underscore one eight zero zero at Yahoo.com. You can totally come sit down over here. I sit down all day. I appreciate the offer, but I want to get this done for you. It's a little more comfortable for me to stand and do this. I can't tell you how oh, amazing this is. Oh wait, I'm just gonna say that. Sorry. Okay. Okay, come on in and sit down so you can get this filled out. Okay. And what I need you to do is so just print your name right where that X is, and then I need you to just write the story about what happened today. Print. Yep, please. A husband, boyfriend? Uh, yeah. are, are you guys married? No. How long have you been together? Two and a half years. Was he drinking or anything today? Yeah. Both of you? I have. Okay. Bless you. Nothing wrong with that. But, but. Okay, I need you to fill up the very nice. Thank you, Arbor. Okay. Very nice. I have a very nice and I'm a new Arbor. No, nothing wrong with that. And who called the police? Did you call the police? I did. Okay. Call 911? Yes. Very good. Has this happened before? Three times. Okay. Um, the last one that came up and they were like, oh yeah, I'm going to write your statement, so no, kind of, you are, and what's going on. 
So three times the police have been here? Was there ever sure. was sure for the reports written when they were here? I'm not answering about that. I didn't have to sign anything. Okay. Okay. What does it say? Can you read it to me? Yep, everything that happened. I'm just going Yep, everything that happened. Publishing at 10 minutes, zero seconds on that file. Proceeding to third folder, OCSO 19-055572. Publishing audio file 911 call, dash first. 911, what is the location of your emergency? Um, well, I don't have an emergency here at my place, but um, my boyfriend was arrested, I think, last Thursday. And he has a no contact form, and he took it upon himself to come over to my house yesterday and took the bike that I bought for him, which is technically mine, and also my debit card. So, and okay, okay. he admitted to yeah, If he bought it, then it's like this. He didn't. Okay, that's fine. I need my debit card, though. Like, I have my eight year old son coming over here, and I can't get my groceries for him. Okay, then what's your debit card? My address is 4748. Branch, F-R-A-N-T-V, okay, four. So what's your apartment number? Three. Your apartment number? Three. Three. Okay, just want to make sure I heard you right. Sure. Okay. Have you used anything else with a credit card? Yeah, you bought me your sticker. Yeah. All right. So, what's your name? Sarah, S-A-R-A-H. Sarah, you call back to the 407 716 Yes. Okay. And he's at his parents' house right now, so if you need the actual address over there or whatever, it needs to be done. I'm sorry, Sarah, what did you say? Um, he's actually at his parents' house right now, so I don't know. Okay, well, we're going to talk to you first to make a report, okay? Gotcha. All right. I'm going to get all, all, get all this information in here, but because it is done to you, I need to um, send it up to you, okay? All right. So, um, when did this happen? Yesterday. Okay. So, your ex-boyfriend? <coughs> yeah, I mean, technically, he's my boyfriend, but yeah, at this point, he's my ex. All right. What's his name? George, J-O-R-G-E. Torres, C O R R E S. Okay, um, by chance do you know how old he is? He's 41. 21378. Okay, if I need to recognize you, are you like my first medic? I'm like, what color shirt pants are you wearing? Um, right now I'm wearing a blue shirt with white sweatpants. And there's a green pineapple on my door because it covers up the three. Okay. So do, you have any, do you have any weapons on you or in your home? No. I mean, I have a baseball bat, but that's just only when I'm here by myself or me and my little eight-year-old. Okay. And you said the... So the pineapple covering the three? Yeah, it's the green pineapple covering up the three that says welcome. And I have a little bird flag out front. Okay. Thank you very much for the help. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. 
publishing audio file 911 call dash second. Publishing the one video in this file that starts with file name Axon. Yes, 
say it all for a reason, right? Okay, 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you do realize it's here, though, right? Have you been drinking? I had a drink. I'm screaming. I didn't drink. I'm looking at one thing. I didn't Relax. 
Publishing from folder OCSO 19-078-009. First item is a PDF of photographs. Item is a single video starting with Axon.
Just getting down to the bottom of it, okay? <laughs> All right. George, I want to talk to you. I want to ask some questions. I have any hands up, so I've got to read you something real quick, okay? Do you understand? Yes. All right. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will be used in a court as evidence against you. You are entitled to talk to an attorney now, have them present now, or at any time during questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, won't be appointed for you without cost. Do you understand these rights as I've read them to you? Okay. At any point hereafter, you wish to remain silent, have an attorney present, all questioning will stop? Do you understand that? So even if you want to talk to me at first and you change your mind, just let me know. Okay? Alright. Has anyone at any time threatened, coerced, or promised you anything in order to induce you to make a statement? Have I promised you anything? Have I bribed you? Have I said, hey, if you tell me, give me a statement? Uh, has any of that happened? No. Okay. Do you understand these rights as I've read them to you? Yes. All right. So, what were you two fighting about tonight? We weren't fighting at all. Okay. That's were you fighting? I'm going to take that in there for that. Huh? Oh, I'll take the statement and get the statement done. Oh, was him? Huh? For him? No, for her. Oh, that way you can sort this out while you're trying to call with him. Sarah! Sarah! I'll get her information from her. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen. Why is he so happy? 
What up? Okay. okay, can you explain the bruises she has? Let's look up and go. Sarah! Stop coming for it. I'm not them down there. I know, but I, I, I'm not going to change that. I know why. Because you have a problem. It's a battery. And when I try to get the straight story, you don't want to give it to me. I'm sitting this chair, please. Uh, you guys can. All right. I've tried. All right. And now that you're going in the back of the car, you want to give me a story. It doesn't work that way. I do nothing but play to you. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to get straight answers. Okay. And you're beating around the bush. I'm not. Yes, ma'am. Do not start kicking and banging on that. Okay? What? <laughs> What's your phone number? I don't know your phone number. Sarah, what's your phone number? It's not him asking, it's us. Jeez. You said, hey, what? Thank you. CSO 19-079759. First file is a PDF starting 48-2-2019. Second file is an audio file, 911 call, publishing.
Barnes and Noble, I don't know, like, if he's there or not. He knows where I had my key. Okay, what we can do is we can meet you a block away from the residence and go with you mm -hmm. to the residence. Mm, I don't know. Um, I tried calling him to ask him to leave if he's not already. So, I have my eight-year-old and I'm trying to watch out for so right now. So, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. I just want to go home. Okay, if you want to go home and you're not sure if he's there or not, we can meet you when you're about five minutes to walk away and go with you to make sure he's not there. Okay, well... Okay. Um, I'm about to get, to be honest with you, kicked out of my apartment because you guys get called so often and, like, the bodega comes and there's not everything and, like, the neighbors complain about everything. We just, I'm trying to avoid that. I just want to go home. Okay, regardless, the deputies are going to go to the apartment, whether it's with you, what I'm suggesting you do, or it's what you want to do. Just have them go to the apartment. So regardless, people are going to see that those deputies going to that address. Okay, so, so when, I, when I called you guys like a couple of days ago, and they didn't make like, not a ruckus, but like they made it like incognito, which is what I need, because I'm going to get kicked out of my place. Okay, when we do a stand, when we do a standby ma'am, all we're gonna do is accompany you to the address and the deputy to make sure that he is not there and then they will leave. If that's all that's going on in this situation right now that you're calling for, it's not gonna be like a big deal. Mm. And what happens when he is there? If he is there and you don't want him there, you can have the trust off. They're going to make sure he can leave. I mean, if he does not live there, like you're saying, if he should not be in there, you can trespass him. You already have a no contact order with him. They will remove him. Okay, well, there was an altercation earlier, and I'll be honest with you. There was an altercation earlier. So that's when he came in, the altercation happened. So that's when I left. I fled. Barefoot. Now I'm at my former husband's house. Okay, would you like the, the officers to meet you where you're at right now? And if mm. I, I don't want to get arrested. I I don't because I fought for myself and I have my eight-year-old and I just want to go home and sleep in my own bed right now. But I did fight back. I'm not going to lie. So. Okay, well, I mean, if, if you're wanting us to meet with you or go to your house, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do if they're either going to arrest anyone, arrest you, arrest him. That's all up to the deputy and what he concludes from the situation that's going on. So it's right, right now it's just up to what you want to do right now. If you want to do a standby, we'll accompany you to the residence. I mean, yeah. it's really okay. just what, what you want to do. I know. I know. I think... I have to say, I'm going to be tomorrow. I just... Oh, what I could do is I can have a deputy call you about the matter. <coughs> if you want to speak to a deputy directly, and if you want to do that first before having us respond out there. Yes, please. Okay. What's your name? Sarah. Hold on a second, Sarah. Thank you for your help, possibly, no more ways than one. And is a good phone number for you for this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to set up a call for a deputy to call you over the phone. Um, mm -hmm. So you can talk to them directly um, and see what they say about the situation. Um, and when they call you, it'll be from a block your restricted number. So if you get a call like that, just make sure you answer. It's going to be the deputy, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. If anything changes or you decide you just want us to come out and give us a call back, okay? Yes. And what was your name? My name's Rachel. Rachel, thank you so much for your help, and I've got the phone right here on the line. Okay, perfect. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Publishing the one video in the folder, starting with 1924, zero minutes to 20 minutes, 4130 to the end. Yeah, I'll be. 
there a back door or a side door? Yes. Please. Nope. Do you go to Tattoo? Just let us know. You're the best lot. Where's that at? 80, 30, 
15 by Al Boulevard. It's on the street next to where the street is. You know where that oh, gotcha. Is. Guys, can I say something now? Sure. If both doors are locked, it has to be in there. Why is that? You can't lock it from the outside? No. Doesn't he have a key here for here, though? Unless he took my spare key, which I'm pretty sure he probably did. Because he has to be in there. Especially the back door. Is the spare key, um... Was the spare key in that, in that, in that house? Outside because he wants to see how long we can. So I'm going to say that then. If those doors are locked, we have to be in there. Alright. Y'all can have to see y'all open the door. Alright, you're going to stay outside the way you can make sure nobody's inside. I'll go back. Thank you so much. Okay. You're hanging out here. I am. I am not going in there. There's no weapon. George? There's no weapon. Okay. Ask for a minute. 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 Thank you, sir. Can we get minimum traffic for a building session? Are we making announcements? Yeah. You guys don't have to do that. Man, we have a way to do things. Okay. Just let us do our thing, okay? Yeah. Yeah, Sheriff's office, he in there, come on out. Cool letter, cool letter. Get in there. Sheriff's office, he in there, come on out. I got a dog. George! Hi, Bobby. Are we on you? Yeah. We have a ton of plants on the right side. Because when you get that stairwell, just fuck your yep. dog right up. Or don't go up, but when you get up. Yeah. What happened? Um, I don't even know what the hell happened. There's a reason you're hiding in the bathroom, so. I'm 
And I'm like, we're not up here for no reason. No, I know that. Okay, so I am a math because we had a, a discussion, and, and as usual, and I am in the room. Okay. What? I am, whatever. I am with um, the, what is it called? It's called, um, no, no, um, I'm not sure. No. How long have you been here? How many days since you got released? When did you get released? Because you were arrested last week, right? Yeah. Alright, when did you get out? Let's say three days ago, let me say. Okay. Okay. Alright, so you're on the weekend? Yeah. Let's say Wednesday. Or was it Monday? Or was it, was it this weekend or was it Monday? Monday. Monday. Alright, and so you were released on Monday? Yeah. Alright, so you were released on Monday? Yeah. Okay. After that, did you, did you guys talk and come back here and you? Yeah. This weekend? Yeah. And everything is fine between you two? So saying, yes. what happened tonight? I don't know what happened tonight. George. So you cops in front of you. You're hiding in the bathroom. Yeah, I know that. Okay. That's not for me. Right? Wifey is nuts and she always freaking starts stuff. And she... So that's what I'm asking. I'm telling you. Tell me what happened. She puts it on me. Okay. She puts it on you. All the time. Oh, you're not. None of that gives me any insight as to what happened tonight. Nothing. You both are very big. She's very big. You're very big. Any more than big. What is she being big about? I can't. I can't discuss what she's discussing. Uh, so you discuss to me, right? <sighs> we just want to hear your side of things, but oh, good. everybody wants to hear my side. Yeah, yeah. all the time. Georgia, generally. Okay. Because this isn't the first incident between the two. Oh, I know that. been arrested as well, Yes. Okay. So tell me what happened. Y'all drinking? Yes. Both of you? Yes. Okay. I can smell alcohol on her. So I know that's, I already knew that, obviously. But, um, we've been going to a lot. Right now, I work at Ace right here. Across the street. Okay. And we went through a lot and, and they were about to shut down and whatnot. That is? Yes. Okay. We just saw her next time. Okay. Just wait. There's a. You can't drink that for right now. Oh, you can't come in here for right now. Okay, you're gonna have to wait. Give us a couple minutes.
I am what am I what am I gonna say? Um I'm actually wrong right now. You're wrong right now? Yes. No matter what way you you're yes. saying you're wrong, no matter what way you cut it? No way okay. shape or shape or form, you know that I got am. I can respect the you're responsibility because most guys won't even take responsibility. You're gonna take me in no matter what. I think well better than that actually. That's really true. I take girls with you all the time, but that better you all the time. Mm. No, you're going to take me in because I uh, did the, the no contact. Oh. You know what that no contact said? Yeah, I'm fucked. What is it? I am fucked. What are you not supposed to do? Oh, man. You're the one that took me in. I think it was better than all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't work this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're not. They're a little similar. Our hairstyles are the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I promise you. Yeah. I, would, I would remember you. It's not me. But what did no contact order tell you? What did the judge tell you? Not nah, 13. You don't hang out. There is contact with her at all. What about in relation to this place? Are you allowed to come back? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Let me ask you this, this is, do you just have no place to go? No, I have got a place to go. But Your mom's place? Yeah. They still live there about Twisty Tree? Yeah. Okay. I do my, I do my homework. Okay. <laughs> okay. But before you guys take me, can I get at least um, <laughs> shoes on? What, what kind of shoes you want? You yeah. want some yeah. comfy ones, some fly ones? Like those, but no fly ones. Me? I like these leather ones. Get the blue ones, please. This one right here? Yes. Which <laughs> shirt you want? And that black one right there. This black shirt? Yes. You want socks? Yes, they're right there. You got a wallet? Phone? Uh, my phone is upstairs. That's it. Have a wallet. Oh, uh, not that shirt. Uh, There's another black shirt that's comfy. Hey, what's this one? Is that the other one? They're both inside out. I don't know. Are they ace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like the H one? Yes. All right, we'll do that one. Can I, can I, please, sir? Please what? What do you need? Uh, so I can put them on. Oh yeah, we'll handle that in a second. Let's get the, let's get the shoes on. Okay. Where do you say the soccer? Uh, soccer. Yes. yes. Is it black or white? Uh, the white ones. Okay. How many years have you got? Three years. Three years, really? Because it was the latest? My phone's somewhere in the house. It, it, it don't really matter. I'll ask her. Okay. <coughs> just step up right here for me, please. I'm just going to get him to turn. You're okay. He's um he's asking about his phone. Do you know where that'd be? No, I don't know where his phone is. Okay. You don't have it in your vehicle or anything? I do not. Okay. Huh? No, he didn't have anything in the pocket. Can we take a picture real quick? You don't mind? 
Are we going to take one overall? Can no, you want to stay right there? Actually, a little more this way, but so we don't get the police car. I heard you You said what? You want to shine the light on anything close? No, I shouldn't. Okay. He didn't have anything in his pockets. I'm going to go on this side one. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. They're going to be coming this way, so if you want. Yep. Uh, one dog sleeping downstairs and one's in your bedroom. Coming from the area. Someone else seen her? Do you have any other questions? I'm sure they're in there somewhere. Dates 21's uh, DVD and its main folder is labeled a folder of attachments. And then there's a file labeled extraction going into folder attachments. First file being published is IMG underscore 0665.mov. Date modified metadata indicates 12 3 2019 2.05 p.m. Whenever you leave the house, just let me know where you're going. And you're going to let me leave? Yes. Just let me know where you're going. And I get to leave the house? Yes. Exit. Just let me know where you're going so at least I know where you're at. Anything else you'd like to add? I love you. So it's not yank me back in the house and sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up? No. Yank. No. Just let me know where you're going so I know where you're at. So if you don't come back, there's no certain time. You don't have to come home at a certain time because I'm not. You're, you're, you're grown up. I just want to know that if, if it does surpass a certain time, that's like, shit, where's she at? I know where you told me you were going to be at. So that way I can go and... So I'm not allowed to have friends? Yes, nobody said you can't have friends. I just go see Boo. You can go see whoever. I just don't want you to go frolicking with, fr with male friends by yourself because you know what's happened already. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I get to go see Boo. Do you get what I'm saying? I get to go see Boo. I don't care about Boo. You can go to see Boo. Do you understand what I'm saying though? Next video is a long file name that starts with 2A494, and it's the only one that will show up with that search. Date modified indicates 12-29-19-12-26 p.m. Hi, fuck you. Let's just tell everybody you got crumpled on the bed. Crumpled? Oh, crumpled? Yeah. The word you're using is crumpled? Alright. Alright, so this, this, this is. <clears throat> my, 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 my. She's still. You gotta put it off with my face, dude. I know you're filming me, but you gotta put it off. What the fuck is that? Stop. Bum rush. Yeah, <clears throat> you bum rushed. I bum rushed you. Yeah, and whatever, whatever. Angry. What was the choice? So, the choice was to beat your ass or get my ass beat or whatever. No. Huh? Twice. Huh? Twice. Twat? Twice. I like twat. I've been trying to get twat from this woman. I'm 
Fall. Pardon me. The phone. I've been trying to get some of that right there. She's on some other shit. She's trying to film me filming her and blah blah blah. I'm calling you. No, she's yeah, you are. You are cool to me. You are cool to me. She is cool to me. She is beyond cool to me. Oh, I want to get this on film, tape. Did I take your cigarettes today? No. Did I take your cigarettes to the beach? No. But who was my mom? You. I blame it on you. Sorry. I apologize. Can I, can I walk around this way and actually film it better? I don't want darkness. Because you're not done. Ah! Ooh, there she goes. There she goes. What are you filming? Are you filming me filming you? You filming me filming you. What's the other thing you've done me wrong by? Man, I watch porno. Hey. Wait, wait. It stopped. My hands hurt. Also, um, um, I, I was, <coughs> I was watching porno. And my, my, she didn't. She, she don't like that. Um, not, I'm not shrugging my shoulders or anything like that, like, like it's not a big deal. After you begged and pled and cried. Yeah. We I'm, trust you. I know. I'm not shrugging my shoulders. Say it. She, beg, yes, pled, yes, cry. She, you begged. I didn't. You did. Well, whatever. I know. Okay, yeah, I did. Say it. I begged and, and. Pled. Pled. And cried. And cried. For me to trust you. For you to trust me. <clears throat> but, again, I'm not did sure. You? Did I watch porno again? Yes, I did. But. Okay. Next is a video starting with 3BV0C. Metadata shows date modified 1229, 1236pm of 2019. Yeah. So you remember this. So you remember this. Are you drunk right now? Um, How much alcohol did you drink? Uh, enough. Enough. You're slurring your words. You're sleeping up against the door right now. Yeah, that's all I need to you. Did I not tell you to not bother me? Yes, ma'am. So what is it you come up and do? What time is it right now? It's 1.20 a.m. Okay. I haven't bothered you since then. I haven't bothered you since then. It's a slow speech. But didn't I tell you before at 9.30 to not bother me at all? Yes. Because of why? Yeah, it's over too long. Nope. Because I think that since 4 a.m., since yesterday, when you fucked with me, <laughs> I know how much vodka was in that bottle. And what's the bottle now? It's kind of um to throw it out. Maybe what does that mean? One more tree. The bottle's empty. I know how much vodka was in there. 
And then for two people to have a really good time. And who drank it? I want it to be documented that I'm leaving you, which means that you're getting out. You're getting out. You're getting out. Nobody's leaving nobody. Stop. And the reason why you were been downstairs and weak enough to get drunk was because you don't give a shit about me. You don't listen to what I say. Special things that I keep on my front page of my phone so I remember to remember to tell you about it because of how special and fun it is. I always bother you. I always bore you. You don't listen to me. Yesterday was my first day at work, remember? And I ended up 90% hearing about your day and 10% about mine. You don't bother me or anything. Sometimes you just... Oh, you overwhelm me. That's the problem. You overwhelm me. By telling you about my first day at work? No, dude. You just overwhelm me about every other day. Just, you know, so I'm overwhelming you by telling you about the fourth highest paid ba- baseball player. That's a client of ours. I'm not starstruck. I don't even know who the guy is. I don't know. So the reason why, so you fully admit now that you didn't care and you did brush me off in the car. Midway sentence. Because you're not in baseball. Well, I'm just saying. I want to go sleep. Go downstairs. Oh, yeah. I'm leaving you, and I'm going to try and cancel plane tickets. No. Because I have a special thing for people like you that are doing It's like, to me, after I asked you, at 1.21 in the morning, morning, I wanted to be asleep. I wanted to stay asleep, which is why I got in bed at 8.30. Oh, okay. I told you not to step foot in the bedroom. So what do you do? Nonetheless, you're too drunk. I the not, amount I of alcohol, I know how much is out there. I, I know how much is there. That's why you're... I could smell you in the bed before you actually got me up. I can smell you from here. You're despicable. I'm not despicable. I'm not doing anything. Leave me alone. Okay. You're not going to remember shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm not doing anything right now. Get away from me. Get away from me. I'm not doing you do everything to me all the time. All the time. Heartache and pain is what you cause me. Heartache and pain. Okay. Keep going. And I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. You get on your fucking old wife and go to fucking work tomorrow. Don't look at me. Don't come close to me. Don't touch me. Do you understand? What do you mean? As of this moment, and until I can get you out, get the fuck out of here. I dare you. Yep, look, look at it. Look. 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 Get away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. I'm going to scream bloody murder. I'm going to scream bloody murder. I will scream by murder. Get away from me. Nobody's doing anything. I'm going to fucking hurt you. Nobody's doing anything. And you're filming it. Let me go. Nobody's doing anything. I'll see you, George, to get away from me. Please get away from me. Get away from me. Yeah, I am. That was your function, dude. My function. My you. function. No, your malfunction is you, dude. Okay, whatever you say. Whatever you say. Well, 
Holy shit, the whole holy shit sent it up here. First it's shit, now it's alcohol. Don't step foot in this bedroom. I, I can't even breathe. Like, I'm, it's disgusting. Like, it's disgusting. She filmed me when I put my Then I said, Love you. I don't love you. I don't like you. I don't want to be with you. Next video is starts four, five, six. That's the only file that starts with that. Date modified metadata, 1229, 2019, 404 PM. And I'm not going to have no Hindenburg situation, no Titanic situation, okay? So this might be a good day. Yes, I'm missing my mustache right now. And later on, everything's going to go off. Truth. Facts. Truth and facts. All of this is going to be missing later on. We'll take another video again later on when it happens. Love y'all whoever watches this video. No. That's not approved. The FDA says it's approved. So it's going to be a good day all day. Yes, it is. Even when I all day. shave all of this. All day. Stuff. Yes. Even when I shave all of this. Stuff. All day. It's going to be an amazing day. It's what time right now? Shaboing boing. It's at 9 30. 7 o'clock, maybe. Shaboing boing. That's what we're doing later on. Shaboing boing. You can stop filming now. Stop filming now. It's going to be a great day. Today's a great day to be a, to have a great day. Boom. Cut. Somebody come in with the... With the... Can somebody come in with the... Can you not? Next file is image underscore zero nine three dot mov. Metadata date modified 1 3 2020 2 48 p.m. It's even more to make sure that you're not playing with it. Because I told him that I was going to go to shit. Next file is image img underscore 0975.mov. Metadata shows date modified January 20, uh, January 19th, 2020, 2 58 p.m. In time. Sirens. Go for a walk. My, by myself? Yes. 
No. Go for a walk. No, I'm just gonna chill out. If that's the case, I'll just chill out. Someone's place. Don't ever be a woman. How can I be a woman? Don't ever. I can't. But I can. Uh, some will understand. Don't ever. I can. Some will understand. Some will understand. I can. Some will understand this. Where you coming from? But when you have a child and it's like right now, this this is for months. But we had a blast with them. Amazing. Then you got out of sorts. I and pushed me. I got, and he stole my phone I, and called for it. Why is it that I got out of sorts? You pushed me. Mm. I pushed. I didn't push. How do I get out of sorts all of a sudden? I don't want to hear it. You drink too much and you're upset. Thanks so much. Go get your fuck card shit. What are you talking about? Your retard paper. Don't hit women. Have I hit you? No. So where are you going with this? Don't you have this off? Tell me whatever, whatever else you have off. Okay. You can film me, take a picture, or whatever you want. Do you want me to tell you you're on my phone? Do I ever get a black? No, I don't. I'm not doing anything to you. No, I Sarah. never do. I'm not doing anything to you, Sarah. That's my name, don't wear it out. Sarita. I'm not doing anything to you. Yet. It's not a yet. I will not. Next image or movie is IMG underscore 1011.move. Metadata shows date modified 2 2 2020, 11 42 p.m. Hi, Miss Van. This is what happens. We're going upstairs to ask for my counties, sir. Because it takes a long time. Where are my car keys? Where are my car keys? Where are my car keys? Where are you? Who are you? What are you talking about? No, 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 you took them. What? Sorry, I didn't see you in front of me. Where are my car keys? Where are they at? All the time. What in the world are you talking about? They're in the... They're there with the... Where is it? Sarah. They're at the... No, no, no. You took them. I want you to walk away with them. Why would I take your freaking car keys? Oh, you're not going to curse now? What are you talking about? You took my car keys. I didn't take your car keys. You did. We'll be starting with file name B51, long file name. Metadata shows 12-29-2019, p.m. modified. situation has never happened before. I love my fiance. She's a good woman. Never been in trouble in her life. She has a seven-year-old son that she loves and cherishes. A blind box interior. She has two dogs. One is blind, one is deaf. She goes around 
and she's driving and sees an animal that's injured, she'll stop in the middle of the street, no matter what kind of traffic it is, just to make sure that that animal doesn't get injured any more than what it already has. We both love each other, we both live together. Yes, every relationship has their arguments, but we are not the type of people that you guys are portraying us to be. She especially. Especially her. So please, if you can, dismiss, dismiss this case, Close. drop it. She is not the type of person. Good person. Great person. Angel. I know she be an angel. She's close to her. Best thing that has ever happened to you. Yes, ma'am. I love you to death. And I hate that we're going through this. Sonic. What? And it good. And it good. I love you too. God will prevail and will take us out of this situation. That'll be it for today, Judge. All right. Members of the jury, it is 5.33 p.m. I thank you again for your time and your service in this matter. With that, members of the jury, we'll see you again tomorrow morning here at 9 a.m. and 12 Alpha. Thank you so much. So George was definitely not innocent. He doesn't exactly seem like a great guy, but he definitely didn't deserve being stuffed into a suitcase until he suffocated. And after being arrested so many times, the only reason for staying in this apartment with this crazy woman is the free rent. I see no other benefits from living with her. At any rate, each of these videos seem to be taking longer than the one before it. So I'm gonna go get started on day six so I can get closer to having Sarah out of my life for good. See you soon. Thank you. Y'all can take a seat. Thank you. We'll see you all at 8.30 tomorrow morning, and we'll start to go through the uh, instructions. Anything else, State, we need to address? No, State or defense? All right, thank you all very much. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. We're off the record.